I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So number three, uh, do we have any public comments that are not in the agenda? And it's limited to two minutes. Any public comments? Do we have any public comments that are not in the agenda? Okay. You'll have time Thank you. for Okay. All right, great. Um, number four, uh, committee members, do we have any comments or announcements? No? Okay. So we'll go to number five, which is the discussion and possible action regarding Onyx 32, the proposed project that is in our, our one zone lab. Okay, so we are on a we are on item number five, discussion and possible action regarding Onyx uh, 32, the proposed project that uh, is our one zone lot. It's 171,183 square feet in size, in size, surrounded by 11 streets, Superior Court, Supreme Court, consists of single, undivided, Cantor Drive, Onyx Drive, Moonstone Court, uh, Moonstone Drive, Moonstone Drive, Pyrite Street. Barrel Street, Forest Park Drive, Rising Drive, Commodore Street, located at 2730 North Onyx Drive, Los Angeles, California 90032. The applicant is requesting various entitlements from the city in order to create a development that minimizes grading and export of dirt and maximizes open space and connection to the community through the extension of existing walk streets. The project will also build new streets and partially enlarge existing streets in order to provide Better access for residents and first responders. And then there's the. Are they all the entitlements? Um, well, they're going to do the presentation. Okay. So, do we have anyone who wants to talk about the project? Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming. This is our third time in front of this uh, Land Use and Development Committee. My name is Kiyoshi Graves. I'm the project manager. This is the uh, architect, Rick Corsini, Corsini Stark. Andy Amakulegre is also uh, assisting with planning issues on this project. Um, I'll just run you through on the back of the handout. There's a little timeline as well. Uh, the project was initially filed in 2014 under a different design. That was revised and we began vetting the uh, revised design uh, with stakeholders on August 24th of last year. We had our first town hall meeting. And then in October, had a second town hall at the Rose Hills Recreation Center, where we had many members from the community come and give us their input on the project. And then in November of last year, we had our first presentation to this committee, uh, presenting the project and going through this uh, presentation, the PowerPoint that we'll be going through with you. Um, we came back a second time with the previous committee in December of last year. And the committee was shuffled a bit, so we're back to go through the initial presentation for the sake of Marissa, the new chair, and also for anybody else who's new to the project today. Um, as it stands, the case has been filed. There are the uh, discretionary requests in it that were outlined in the um, description. And for the specifics on the project, I'll turn it over to Rick, who will go through the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Good, e good evening, everyone, and uh, I will kind of uh, start to talk about the project's uh, uh, inherent characteristics and some of the design ideas behind uh, uh, the project and how we've approached, I think, what are some of the important um, issues that will have impact on the community and how we can, we can either mitigate the, mitigated them or also uh, uh, will demonstrate how we think it's overall uh, a benefit to the community. So I'm going to talk first about the issue of density and uh, you know because this is of course the number one issue that most people are concerned about when a new project is being developed. Um, in this case uh, the idea, even though we are applying for uh, a zone change that allows for multi-unit uh, multi housing, uh, the idea is that we are maintaining R1 density. 
We are not increasing the density over what the existing R1 zoning would allow us to build. Um, the idea of, of doing me. this. Are we going to have input to that statement that you made right now? Uh, you can. No, so if, if input from the from the community will be done after the presentation. Okay, because I, yeah. I just want to just highlight that comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So the, the the whole endeavor is for, is to allow us to actually uh, build in a more compact uh, manner with a smaller footprint, which allows us to build uh, buildings uh, or the houses closer together and to uh, yield more consolidated common areas and landscape and open space. So this is our uh, the site uh, as it is as it stands. The single single parcel at 160,000 square feet. Um, next issue that everyone is usually concerned about is traffic. Um, in this case, uh, the existing circulation of the site. Uh, there are several uh, discontinuous or disconnected roads um, that make the uh, uh, circulation on the hillside problematic. Uh, this is a common situation in hillsides throughout Los Angeles. Uh, so, uh, and I think our project will um, address this specifically so that um, we will no longer have just the one-way dead ends that currently exist. Uh, and our new, uh, our new situation will actually connect, um, connect the streets between Onyx and, and Barrel and Forest Park uh, will have uh, fully um, up to code current, uh, current um, uh, uh, city standards for these new segments of road, roadways. What it will allow us to do, it will, what it will allow uh, a resident, residents in the neighborhood and the new uh, families that do live here to have two ways down the hill, down to Huntington and Mission Road. It will also enhance the capability of emergency vehicles to access this neighborhood. Um, second component of the uh, traffic, or let's say circulation, um, is that we are introducing uh, a network of pedestrian pathways that will allow uh, residents, not just the people who buy houses in the new development that we're proposing, but everybody in the neighborhood will have access to these pedestrian pathways. Uh, these pathways will be um, uh, uh, associated with common areas, community gardens, and um, passive recreation spaces for uh, the community in general. Uh, the pathways down from the hill uh, will be open to the public and will uh, enable people to walk from the hillside down to uh, Mission Road and access the uh, public transit stop that will allow people to, to then uh, take the buses to either Pasadena or to downtown LA. Inspiration. Um, one of the important things that, that occurred to us when we first started looking at the site was really the, the topography and uh, the nature of the hillside was something that really uh, all to mind um, hilltop villages of southern Europe and elsewhere in the world uh, that really um, uh, put a premium on the land and uh, found ways to create more compact villages on these steep hillsides that uh, uh, that kind of level of density and compactness really was the, uh, were the circumstances that contributed to their uh, architectural character, the urban space around them, and that really allowed their communities to uh, congeal around um, uh, throughout these villages. So we, we looked at a lot of uh, precedents for this and we were really inspired about you know trying to find a way to make uh, the result um, uh, fit within, uh, try to find this intention and work within the city's regulations for hillside development and current city planning rules and regulations. Also working with the Bureau of Engineering's requirements that don't necessarily yield uh, environments that look like this. Um, and we're uh, really set that as our own kind of architectural and urban design task is to try to create this kind of character uh, as, as best as possible within the, within the current LA circumstance. So we really looked through 
to create some vi uh, variety within the unity that uh, there's a consistent approach architecturally to all of these projects, all of these villages, uh, but there's still sufficient variety that it makes it interesting. And we're looking at building typologies, how they work with slope grooves, how they might work with, with uh, the, the sloping topography of a particular locale, and we felt that these kind of this kind of form language was very important. Um, the other uh, really important idea having, having to do with uh, how pedestrians use uh, a hillside neighborhood, uh, how, it, how these, uh, uh, we have a long tradition here in Los Angeles of uh, public walkways in our hillside neighborhoods. Um, these were, these hillsides throughout, especially in Northeast LA, uh, were built in the teens and 20s to allow uh, residents of the hillsides to access the red cars that were running along all the boulevards. Um, we do, you know, I never did take a photograph of the one that's right adjacent to our side on, on Commodore. But as it turned out, after we developed this idea and we started really hiking around the neighborhood, we realized that there is one of these right on Commodore, uh, you know, 100 yards from our site. Um, so we were kind of tuning into the, uh, the spirit of the neighborhood here. But it gives, it, these, uh, this kind of public infrastructure really gives um, uh, neighborhoods the ability to um, use their environment in a better way. They become uh, infrastructure, uh, they can become meeting places, it allows, it facilitates people to access public transit to get around town so that the, the hill, hillside neighbor, residential neighborhoods are not isolated as autonomous um, areas. It also gives us opportunities for design that helps, uh, in this case, this is uh, not far from my house in Silver Lake, um, the idea architecturally of integrating planting and lighting that help contribute to the uh, physical idea, uh, identity of that neighborhood. And so um, along with that, <coughs> uh, the typology of these uh, uh, public stairways, there are also typologies of how hillside housing in Los Angeles works. So we took a look uh, around you know, uh, Silver Lake, Echo Park, Eagle Rock, all of them in this northeast area, which is really rich in variety of these types of, of this type of housing, and started looking carefully at how um, can, uh, how buildings can once again create variety within unity and unity within variety, um, and finding ways to replicate um, uh, the, the the principles of hillside development, uh, how we can use the uh, how we can integrate the automobile in a productive way. Um, and not in an incidental way, uh, and create uh, out, and at the same time also create outdoor space, uh, private space for each of the houses uh, within this kind of uh, situation. So, Spanish Spanish colonial revival. Uh, this is a project by Rudolf Schindler in Silver Lake. Uh, another one by Schindler in Silver Lake with upslope housing and parking at, at grade level. Every unit has its own private. Um, uh, outdoor terrace that has uh, that accesses the view um, for each one of these houses. More traditional hillside housing. And some of the stairways are on the left hand side is a public stairway. The red one on the right hand is private stairway. Um, all of them sort of work to kind of tie the neighborhood together. And a more uh, contemporary uh, redo, uh, remodeling of a bungalow court on a hillside. Um, these are all kinds of uh, models that we were kind of studying to integrate into our design thinking. Mm -hmm. okay, and then so here we go, existing sites. Uh, this is what uh, the uh, development would look like from the air once it's uh, completed. Uh, and this is the site plan. So we can say, um, we can start from the bottom of the hill. The idea is that we're taking uh, the two cul-de-sacs of Superior Court and Supreme Court, which currently have, there are two, uh, there are uh, five foot wide public rights of way that already exist uh, from the, the end of the cul-de-sac up to our pro property line. So the idea is that we would uh, uh, improve those 
public rights of way and maintain, allow them to be maintained as public rights of way, but improved at the expense of, the, of our client, the developer, um, and uh, cleaned up uh, and, and lit and made um, habitable. And then from our property line upward, we would continue new stairways and land, uh, that would be landscaped on either side, also with, with proper lighting, that would allow for these pathways, uh, these stairways to connect up to the new streets. And actually, say if we take the pathway from Supreme Court, you could uh, uh, walk along the right-of-way, up the stair, uh, onto what's ostensibly private property, well, actually private pro property, but open to the public. And all the way up to Barrel Street, you could cross Barrel Street and uh, continue to walk all the way up the hill to the very top, uh, the top of the hill. Um, the same would be true on Superior Court. We would run; uh, you would have a stairway with a walk, all take you all the way up to the the uh, knuckle here on Onyx, Onyx Drive, the transition between Onyx Drive and the new Barrel Street, and you would be able to uh, take this up and continue. Uh, on barrel and take a walk up to um, this um, central central stair uh, in the middle of this block. Also, uh, I'll point out that if you see here at uh, uh, label two and five, these are community gardens that we would be terraced, and those stairways would allow residents to access those community gardens. Um, the same is true on uh, here number five. Uh, on this uh, on the southerly uh, one from the Superior Court. Um, number three here, in the middle of the block, um, would be, uh, and I'll show you a, a rendering of that, would be a, a pocket park, a small uh, uh, passive recreation area that will can become the focal point for the neighborhood, allow kids to play safely off the streets, um, or a place to stroll, and again, all of these pathways would be open to the public. They would, they would not be gated. Um, and I will take you through the rest of that. So that you're also aware of some of the other constraints that we're working with. Um, this peak shaded area is, is the ridge of the hill, and within that ridge we have a 15 foot high uh, height limit. So in general, the, the uh, uh, height limit is 30 feet everywhere else on a hillside. In this pink zone, uh, we are, our height is limited to 15 feet. So you see that in our proposal that the, uh, the maximum height is really just one story high, stepping down the hill. Um, I should also note, uh, one of the things that we're asking for in our request um, is that uh, you know the Bureau of Engineering is requiring us to make uh, uh, to number one work with their uh, street standards, which is extremely important, um, and the alignment was something that was worked out with Bureau of, the Bureau of Engineering, so that it would conform with you know all of their requirements. Uh, in working through those requirements uh, to build this road to their standards, if you note right here at this knuckle where we're connecting Onyx Drive to Barrel. Um, it requires the construction of a retaining wall to support the street. That retaining wall will be publicly owned as part of, of, of the new roadway alignment and, and, and maintained by the city. Um, but the retaining wall that is, that is required to be built uh, will actually be 19 feet tall. So uh, what that means is the public roadway itself will exceed the maximum height allowed in the ridge zone. It's one of those kind of strange, contradictory things that happens as we get into the public process. But so that you know, it's not that and we are requesting relief from the 15-foot height limit in certain places along this ridge zone for a place such for a condition such as this. Um, so that's you, know, you may look at that and say, well, why are they doing it this way? But this is this is part of it. And this is uh, to explain the height limit uh, changes. Uh, or the request that we're making. Uh, on the left-hand side is, our, is, is the site with, with uh, essentially one-story housing, housing that is stepping down the hill. The blue uh, color is an overlay that shows us what a 30-foot height limit looks like on the site. And you can see these little gray areas are houses that, that extend beyond that 30-foot that height limit. 
right? So we're asking for relief in those areas, heightened relief um, um, in, in those particular exceptions. All of these exceptions here are dictated by the elevation of the street that is required by the Bureau of Engineering. So it's sort of forcing us to, to pop up out of that building envelope. And then when you overlay the pink zone of the 15-foot height limit, you see the little areas that are uh, basically beyond the 15-foot height limits. So in some places, we're only popping out a foot or, a foot or two. Uh, in some places, right here around that corner, we we're already four or five feet over the height limit just at the street level. And then so when we have a one-story house or a garage above that, you're popping up another you know, 10 feet. Uh, and now this is a cross section through that ridge zone, so you can kind of you can really see from the very top of the hill, uh, the top uh, three lots at the very top are all essentially one story high, stepping down the hill, or where they are two levels, uh, they're cut into the hillside, so we're excavating to get that that lower level. Um, so we basically maintain that one story height all the way down until we get to Barrel Street, uh, where uh, depending on, because of the topography, it's fairly you know, a little complex, but there's a, a spot where it does uh, step up to 30 feet high. And you can see how we're, we are fitting the houses within that limit uh, in general, in most locations. Good question. Where is the retaining wall? And I keep the retaining wall on, on this right there. Right there, this, it, where this is cut, it's lower, and I'll show you another diagram where it, where it cuts through the kind of the maximum. Are those caissons? There will be caissons, yes. Okay, and then in other locations, uh, typical uh, cross section of up here from uh, uh, this is Barrel Street uh, and Forest Park up here. Uh, we have a typical downslope house and a typical upslope house. Like, you know, cut cars into the hill. So is your pattern, I, I like it a lot, is it working where, this is just me trying to understand it, because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get lost in the project. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is actually your design where if I'm buying one of those houses, I'm not going to be looking at another house. That's right. That, that, and I just want to make that sure. So we're, we're talking about it being stepped down. The only problem is, is when you said at the knuckle, where those houses probably will pop up a little higher, with a steel block used, or no? No, they won't. We're, we're being very, we're absolutely consistent, and I'll show you the renderings that'll make okay. it a little more sure. uh, clear. Okay. Um, so we're very consistent. It's really just about how we, you know, uh, the topography varies a lot. The road that we have to build doesn't. It has to be very consistent. It has to have a sixty has to have a sixteen percent maximum grade by code. Right? But if the topography is varying, which it does, if we're, and we're not coming in and regrading the whole hill to make it consistent like you would in a much bigger track development on a hillside, we have a consistent road and a varying topography. So that's the, where the height it becomes almost impossible to get uh, within a consistent height limit when the topography itself is varying. So that's, that's really why you'll see these requests for height variances. It's just about you know, the, the issue between having a consistent road and an inconsistent topography. The houses are all the same design in terms of profile and heights and floor-to-floor -floor heights and all that. It's just that the topography below them is varying and that technically the way the code reads in terms of how you take your measurements is it doesn't matter what the peak is relative to the street. It's, it, it's, it's measured from the bottom of the, of the adjacent grade. Now here, in this diagram of the lower drawing, you can see where our maximum drop-off is. This line right there, that is, uh, represents the retaining wall for the roadway. And that is 19 feet tall, right off the bat before you even build a house. So the Bureau of Engineering, if they were just to come in to build the streets, without any housing or anything else, they would need a height variance from city planning to build a public roadway. And so that's what we're, that's part of our, our task. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so uh, here we are, existing condition, and then this is what it looks like when we have 
this fully built out. So we've tried to maintain the very low profile, hugging the, the topography. Um, it's sort of, you, you still see the shape of the, of the hill, um, and every house maintains a clear view of the horizon, and no, uh, no house is blocking another house's view. Uh, we've also taken the point you can see that we have, you know, uh, uh, two colors of uh, finish, like the light green and the dark brown color, to continue some uh, to enhance the um, the variety of the uh, of the houses. And so this this view is taken right at that knuckle, the turn between. We're looking down towards uh, Barrel, and to the left is the. Uh, extension to onyx right around right and to our back would be the 19 foot high retaining wall supporting this portion of the street so you can see on the right hand side on this on the down slope it's consistent there's a one-story garage and then the whole and then the house steps down the hill and that's consistent um, on the left hand side we'll have the upslope houses and these houses will have a garage and then a uh, uh, a bedroom above that, and a roof terrace, and then the living room is on the third level. So you have a, a park area here. How will people access that through their stair? Is this going to be a stair leading down to that well, area? There, that's right. There, well, actually, it's not a it's not a park. It's oh. actually a, a private space for okay. that house at the corner. Okay. But there's a public stair okay. that, right along that property line, and there will be publicly accessed uh, uh, community garden spaces. So that one house will have that whole lot? That's right. Okay. That one house is a big lot and that was, um, you know, I'll explain a little bit about how we've utilized this. So across the streets, these are the upslope houses and on the left hand side here you can see this is one of the, this is the central public stairway that will take you up the hill. This one would lead to the pocket park in the middle of the block. So this would be maintained. You can also see that it's it's leading to the entry the entrance to the house on the left. So you'll still use the public stairway to get to the front door um, of that particular house. And let's see. And then this is the pocket park, uh, kind of in the middle of the project. So you're integrating, like you said, the stairwell so that the, probably that house that you're just talking about is going to have another uh, entrance, but it'll have an egress through the stairwell. Is that what it's going Well, to actually, be? in this case, is it going to be that is the entrance. Yeah. That is the entrance. Exactly. So, you, you know, you, you and we don't have, and in most of these cases, a lot of these houses don't have a direct internal stair between the garage and the house. You have to exit the garage and go up the stair and use the public space, right? And so that is something that also helps um, contribute to the community quality of, of, of the neighborhood. Everybody, it's public space. You don't get to circumvent uh, that public space through some public internal you know, circulation. These are the kind of small details that really um, help contribute to a larger sense of community within a uh, especially a residential uh, development. You know, it's small, but it seems like a small thing. But it's also how many of the houses from the 1920s and 30s actually worked anyway. And that's part of what's contributed to the uh, uh, character of those neighborhoods. So it's going to be a, a it's going to be a neighborhood with I think we all like our privacy or for our neighbors. But in reality, it's only it's going to be like a community, like you're talking about, a little village in itself. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have questions and comments during yeah. the presentation? No. Are we Does going to have? Yes. We we have a time for comments. Um, well, I think we're interacting in a good way because we're really we're not against the project. I'm not against the project, and I'm a stakeholder also. I just want to know better what we're looking at so we can embrace it and tweak it if we need to one way or the other, because, uh, you know, he needs a variance, and either we could oppose him or not, you know, we could get a big moratorium and say we're going to oppose him. Right. right? No. But, but, but hang on, so I want to make sure I give him, but I want him to be interacting with me on that aspect, because I'm trying to 
I'm slow on ADD and everything else. I need to understand this. Okay? So I'm trying to understand. No, we appreciate yeah, it. Actually, yeah. this is it. So I'm done with my okay. presentation. So. Right. Yeah. No, what I wanted to explain to you, we have an order. And let me explain the order. He did the presentation. We'll do a recommendation. And then there will be public comments. And we can go back to the presentation. Who's doing you. the recommendation? We're going to do the recommendation, um, considering the community, and then we will have public comments, and then we'll have a discussion, and then we'll have a, a board meeting. Okay, the only reason why I'm saying you're, yeah. you're saying you're doing that recommendation, I'm part of the community. I never yeah. got a, I never got any kind of input from you or asking me anything about. How that's I why you are here, right? Well, that's that's what I'm saying, but. You, so you're going to wait for your recommendation until after we talk? Excuse me, Madam Chair. That's what I'm trying to understand. We, since Rick is finished, can we continue the thread with this gentleman? Because yeah, I, we're, yeah, we're, we're it's a good thing. We would yeah. welcome. It, it, can it, you continue your yeah, thought? Yes. Yeah. Please and, please. and the reason why I'm saying this is here we go back again. I'm a stakeholder. You know, this man right here is a stakeholder. I don't know how many people around here are stakeholders, but we're stakeholders. Yeah. We live here, and we love our community, and and we want growth. We want positive growth. Uh, you know, my, you know, there's a couple of red flags. I don't like density. Who does? The, the hill's already been, that hill has already been getting dense. Every opportunity, every piece of property is gone. It has gone up and high. And not only here, but I also, I, I live in the, in the San Pascual area. Same thing there. They're saying, okay, they're not, uh, what do you call it, apartments, but the houses are so dense together and they're like three stories high. I mean, they sit way in the heck out there mm -hmm. with the roof lines and all that. Unappealing, but they're done already. So we, you know, we have no control over that. Over this, I really appreciate your effort to keep it low. It looks tucked in, it really has a nice feel to it. The, the aspect of what I'm looking at it is, is it going to be friendly for the rest of the community? Because if you're gonna make a community within a community, uh, and that's not a good thing. You, you see what I'm saying? So when you said, okay, because right now uh, the big thing are walks. The big thing is, uh, uh, what do you call it, finding those stairwells. I found one. I've been living in the neighborhood like 50 some odd years. I'm walking down home, I forget what street it is. So there's one of those uh, stairwells that you're talking about. I mean, I'm walking. I would have never known because I'm walking. I'm walking from my to Lincoln Heights. So I looked at and I'm going, oh my gosh, this has been here forever. The drawback to that one was there was guys hanging on in the middle of it drinking. So right. there's the whole thing of how do we how do we uh, protect that neighborhood that you're making right now of that. I mean, because you want it to be nice, but you don't want it to be where a place where at the same time people are going to come in there, they're going to spend their good money, and we're still going to have the same problems. You see what I'm saying? But if you're saying we're going to, and I think in a sense, cause the people who live in a tight density, because I'm trying to follow your theory, it, it becomes a community where, hey, you know, we all protect our stairwell because we all use it. And that's what you're talking about. You know, I mean, the same thing goes when you come around the turn with that big, what do you call it, retaining wall that we have. Graffiti is the worst thing in the world for that neighborhood. But you go back. How much yeah. time are we being? So yeah. here, here, two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. He's, he's actually got about 20 seconds. Okay, thank you. So the biggest thing Green. is, the same thing goes with the graffiti and all that. How are we going to handle that? Are you going to, what do you call it, place your uh, building of the wall where you're going to have greenery, where they're not going to be able to come in and tag and stuff like that? You know, that's Green. Thank you. Any other public comments? <laughs> yes, Tom. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Before you do me. Who was your name? My name was Gil. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Tom Williams. Uh, 1922 is when my house was built. Yes, the sidewalks and the stairways still don't meet ADA approval. If you're going to put in a stairway, especially if it has to service the house, that means it's public, and that means it has to be ADA approved. Stairways without ramps, forget it. So, you might say a basic fundamental. This is a small lot development, means that 
They cannot have common walls, elsewise it would be a condo. So, I have a problem with a lot of space. Is there going to be a homeowner's maintenance association which will be liable and responsible for all security, all the lighting? You said lighting on the stairway. Hmm, okay. And security. There's also a matter that I've noticed that you have some sidewalks that are gravel, perhaps, not concrete, uh, ADA compliance. Can I get a wheelchair to do that? And there are people here that need wheelchairs. So, um, I I, as it is pro provided now, can't support it because it doesn't work. And I would like to know who in Bureau of Engineering has approved or at least consented to non-concrete sidewalks and the stairways without ADA compliance. I want a name. Okay. That's all. Yeah, I, um, I've been here a few times. <laughs> and um, I know that one concern people had was that Commodore was going to be the, the primary entrance way to all these streets. And there was discussion, uh, and, and also there was a uh, recommendation that you could put a light on the other side, I think it's Boomstone, yeah. so that people could have access in and out from that uh, uh, street light, uh, single light, light signal, mm -hmm. so that people could have uh, not on, just on Mission Huntington. Yeah, so people could have access in and out, not just from one road, uh, Commodore, but from both sides. That way, it's not as uh, I guess bottleneck. Mm -hmm. so I don't you know. need a light on the Commodore, also. right? I, I think Commodore Two needs. Um, the mm -hmm. you know, only turn right because I mean it's a four-way lane. We buy it really with the middle one. Mm -hmm. So to turn to left, it's impossible on Commodore because there's so there's much traffic. So I don't know. Those are things that uh, stakeholders brought up at the last meeting. Uh, recommendations that use it to be, be considered. So I'm wondering uh, if that's been considered and if it has. What what uh, has been your your outcome. Yeah, I can speak to that. The signal, we looked into that with our traffic engineer and decided that's beyond the scope of what we can consider with this project. Um, it would be, it's off the side of the property for one by quite a ways. We understand the, um, the input from the community, but our traffic engineer assessed it and said it's, it's going to open up the scope of our project way beyond um, what would be reasonable for us to consider so on his advice we've decided not to explore that any further. Well, I didn't mean to you guys would be working or paying yeah. for it but uh, maybe the city can uh, mm -hmm. do something about that so that there's a uh, I mean I'm, I'm worried about people trying to turn left out of Commodore and, you know new people and being hit because uh, they just don't know that it's maybe impossible to turn from there. Hey, Commodore is where, where, the, where the county building is, right? Yeah, right small little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to get my little. Yeah. No signals. Yeah. 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 Just, I just throw it out there just because I know that people brought it up uh, a couple of times in the past meetings and uh, something that I'm, it's a safety concern and a uh, traffic concern as well. Yeah. I uh, haven't forgotten about that. And we can see if we can explore that in another way where we don't take on the primary responsibility right. of it. I asked the traffic engineer, how would normal stakeholders get a light put in? And he would say that the city would go through a warrant analysis and study the need. They would do a traffic analysis of their own. You'd be in the same boat as we would be, but we can do some of that research and report back on what we find. The approximate cost of the signal is about a million dollars, a million and a half. And, and that would be something you want to, it's, it's sort of an advocacy question, and it's something you want to bring to uh, your city council members City Council Member's office and start to you know advocate for that kind of mm -hmm. improvement. I, I, have, I have one last question. Talking about um, you get into the hillside and, and you know making the houses sit into the hillside. Just how much soil are you thinking about excavating um, out of the hillside? Excess cut. Yes. Yeah. Export is about seventeen thousand five hundred cubic yards. You can never mind this. 
It's uh, for now all that's proposed is improving the transitions. So that's just a little bit beyond the, the intersection of the new road on the project site and the existing road. And it's not proposed to expand any farther. So the proposed roads are the current hillside standard, which is 34 feet total public right of way with a 26 foot wide roadway. You know, the road widths vary quite a bit in this area. Um, so, yeah, because your 30 foot road is going to be. Like 12 feet wide, maybe. I know. I know the maps say 26, but you know the road. They're only like 10, 12 feet wide. I'm not sure what the what any specific road width is currently, but what we're building, uh, we can speak to that. But you know what? The, the thing on what you're talking about. But the whole the whole hillside there, it's almost like Silver Lake or Echo Park or you take the even if you're talking about Europe. They're, they're choked. I mean, you, we have to have the courtesy to let everybody go by and, and that kind of deal. Especially, and what ends up happening is it gets dense, even if you have to, I don't know, pool in the bind there, but what, we're going to have more vehicles up there. It's, it, it just creates a, a little bit of a hazard, is if I can say it that way. Maybe a little bit more than a little bit of a hazard. Uh, Parking is really bad still already, so that's a major problem. And uh, so, the, well, the new street's going to be wider, so that'll add street. Yeah, well, the, 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 the new streets will be wider. Well, so, well actually, yeah, the community uh, will have very yeah. nice big streets, and they can fill them up and still have open. But yeah. you're talking about now, uh, in what do you call it? As far as people coming in and out, uh, it, through, through it, traffic. It, through yes. Traffic. I, 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 let me give you one situation. The city of Glendale allowed these condominiums to be built in a cul-de-sac. Don't ask me how they passed that, because here it is again. That street that leads to that condominium, and I think there's about 75 units, you can't put two vehicles coming out. It's either one or the other is going to come in and out. And for me, and this is what we're talking about, sometimes things get by and, and either, I don't know, however they get by. And right. now if you had an egress, a, a real serious situation in that place, right. a fire, a fire, it, 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 they're gone. I mean, it is that bad. So those are the biggest things that, because right, I, okay, my property is on Amethyst as you come up, and that's one of the main arteries coming up. Same thing there. You, you have red flag, you only have on one, it's, it's, you know, when you have red flag days, um, People are looking places to park. Uh, so, you know, those are our concerns. The concerns are, here we go back again. I understand we want to build all that, but let's take Hollywood. Have they had a fire at the Montecito, these places where, can you get an engine in there? Can you get different people in there? It, it, that's the, the hardest part uh, of your project. I, I mean, I think the project is fantastic, but if we can meet those, or more to our satisfaction, if I could say that, I wouldn't oppose it, to be very honest with you. But the key point, when we're talking about people's lives and, and their structures, uh, that's a concern for me, a big concern. Uh, what, do you have a sewer map? Because there are sections on that hillside which have no sewers and are uh, all on septic tanks. I believe will there be a sewer going from Forest Park Drive down to Mission along Palmerville? I believe we've talked about this at previous meetings, yes. but yes, there's sewer lines that are planned underneath the streets, and we've talked about also the potential of connecting houses above the site that are on septic currently into the public improvements. And storm drains? Yeah, that's part of the project as well. Part of the D permit? Or? It's ongoing. Any other public comments? At the previous meeting, you said you were going to develop the road to the corners, like the Commodore and Forest Park. 
from the Forest Park and Rising. So you, you change your mind about that? I'm not sure. I think you're talking about widening. Some of them are going to be widening mm -hmm. the corners of the property. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what you're saying here. Yeah. What we said is we would do the transitions, and we weren't sure if there was anything beyond that. If it happens that there's a roadway section less than 20 feet, the city may compel us to improve that to ensure that there's a 20-foot continuous roadway up to the site. And you're right. Um, we're not sure about that yet. The transition will be 15, 20 feet. The uh, civil engineer is not sure how wide that transition will be. No, I mean from the. In, from your property, yeah, how deep into, into, the how into the next row? We don't know how far that will go into the, the other row. Yeah, it's sort of a real quick, uh, a comparison I think that is at is Mount Washington. If you ever drive around there, I know the area. Well, that's a situation where the roads at the top of the hill are much wider than those that give access. And you know, historically, that's because the top was developed first, right. and the roads leading up were, you know, cart paths. Right. It and it's. Oh. Yeah. It's 1920s. Take it from Cypress Park or any one of the ones that are We're looking at yeah. comparable physical configurations. And so the issue you're raising is do constrained lower roads necessarily dictate the development on the upper parts? On Mount Washington, it is worked there. And I don't think from, from a planning perspective you can ever stop people from building on their land based on what people, how the roads were built previously in 1920 or whatever they were built. True, true. What you can do is ensure that the new roads you built conform to current code standards and comply with all fire department regulations. That we will do with this project. No, I, I, I can agree with what you're saying. I, I don't want people to tell me what I can build with what could build. I agree with you. Any other obvious comments or stakeholders? So then we have a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that the, um, you're not going to be blocking any views, but of the house at 2811, you're building right almost to the the corner. So how tall is this house going to be? The height of it? If it's It'll only, be over 15 feet above the bridge. So if it's 15 feet, it will be blocking the view of that house at 2811. And and you go down here, right below. You go to the curb right here, and that this house here is set way back. When you build these houses, and they're 15 feet tall, they'll be blocking the view from that house. And if you go down to this one. Barrow, even though that house is 75 feet up from the street, the house is next to that. All these houses there will be blocking their view. Okay? So. You well, said they wouldn't be blocking any views, but they will be. Well, you know, it, uh, I'll just respond. I mean, uh, the, the, <laughs> we're conforming to all the very, you know, very strict height requirements for the zoning and for the, for the hillside, for hillside development. So the, there, there may be some, uh, a few angles that where, uh, where there will be some uh, uh, blocking of a view by be, uh, due to the kind of uh, varying topography that might be there, but we're, we are generally, con we are in every place uh, conforming to those height limits. So 30 feet in, ge uh, in general, except within the 15 foot uh, ridge zone height limit. And, you know, there may be some views for sites that are uh, houses that are off our property that might be slightly impacted by the fact that there's a house there. Um, but it's Kind of hard for us to anticipate. You say what slight, all those you, you say slightly, <laughs> but if it's your house and you're getting up and you had a view, it's not slightly interrupting you. It is a major. But if you've been on that hill and you look and you're looking at what do you call that Long Beach and stuff like that, and all of a sudden this building is there and I no longer have the view of Long Beach or of Rose Hill, it, those areas, then I'm impacted. It, it slightly or not, it's it's a major deal because I've been getting up every day looking at those views. Now all of a sudden I'm going to look at this massive, and I'm, the reason why I'm saying that is because most builders do not take into consideration the people around them. To an extent they do, but when it comes to buildings, uh, 
there's a unit on Bridewell right now. This guy came in, I don't know, about 10 years ago, built some units. They granted him units right next to him, and guess what? It went 30 feet up. So what are those people are going to get up? They rent those places? Walls. Which before, they had a view, they're gone. Okay? But that's the thing that we're talking about. And, and so, you know, for the people that don't live there, it, they don't care. They're going to get up and have their own views, whatever they have. But the person that isn't going to move it, it desires to keep that view. But again, your project ends up being that 1%, but I'm that 1%. It affects me. If it affects my neighbor here or one of the neighbors here, it's major. So then you're asking also for a, a variance in density, correct? So when you're asking for a, a, a density, there we go back again to what you were talking about is building these smaller, uh, what do you call it, or tighter, more compact. yeah, more compact, you, you know, which is, anyway, I, I, don't, I, I would like them to be a little bit more open, but that's fine. That, that's the new thing that's coming in now. I don't think we could really change that. I, I mean, the only thing that, uh, we, the stakeholders who live here, could just request of the developer is, they're making money, period. Well, they're going to be doing this. And, and they're willing to pay whatever they're going to do because they're going to make money. That, that's a fact. But next to that is, we're the ones that have to live here. So it gets back again to uh, how do we really take care of those persons that they're, it, it's impacting their house. It's impacting their views. Or are they the victim of the project? I oh, want to clear, or touch on a few things. Yeah. One, I would not use the term victim. Um, well, you're we're a victim. Yeah, but, 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 but right, I understand your point, the, the, and I'm, I'm responding to you, sir. Okay. Um, one thing that works in your favor is what makes this a difficult site, the slope, also pulls all the heights down because you measure the height from the lowest point no, I, of the grade I, on the site. So that height is being, it's going down for the yeah, most part. I understand. And so that issue for you is going to arise, block views of houses where you're on a comparable grade and a house coming up above your existing view. All of our houses are sinking down. There's one story at grade. And for, for anybody living on a street with a view, would you consider a one-story house next to you to be a major impediment to a view, generally? And you, that's a loaded question. Okay, but I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna respond, that, but let me respond to that. Okay, so let me respond yeah. to that. Okay, it's not a problem if it's sloping down. Yeah. The problem comes back, I'm at the end of the project, my house is here, comparable to grade, and you put a three or, sto or, a three or two story house, it affects me. If it's a, again, if it's a one story, I can deal with that. Okay. But now when you're talking about two stories up, now that affects me. Right. Because the photography is going to, you, you, you see what I'm saying? So that's where we could be, that's the only thing I'm talking about being affected. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I understand your project, it's fantastic, but the people that are at the same grade, those are the ones that are going to be affected. The majority of the people are not going to be affected, but I'll tell you what, the people that have the three lots straight down the line, which happens to be right here, he's going to be affected. And as to density, it's not a variance for density. The size of the lot allows for the number of dwellings, number of parcels that we're proposing with this project. The zone change is to allow small lot subdivision. And you were I want to mentioning that why are they building these so closely? Uh, Rick can speak to this, but it, it is a more efficient way to build when you minimize the separation between buildings. You can uh, get economies of scale by doing that. And what you gain it's not also. my first rodeo. This is my second meeting. What you also we gain is more open space, which is the pocket yeah. parks that are part of this project and the common stairways. Okay. You just mentioned this desire to be able to explore and utilize the space. You're netting public, publicly accessible stairways and two public streets for this project. I can think of no better way to increase public engagement in this project than those you know aspects what? of it. What you said is right, but whatever's private eventually could be closed off and, and said, you know, this is a private park. So I understand everything that's open, but you hit that private line, which you just said, it's private, I'm going to put a gate here. 
it could happen. But why? Because it's private. Nothing in the world that we can stop it because it's private. Well, you're hitting my good point it, there. But hang on. But See, it's been private oh, the whole time. Oh, the land that you've oh, enjoyed oh, as being open space has been private the whole time. I, I'm sure it probably has. Okay, yes. but you guys had to buy it and give it up so that you can do this. But, I'm not sure give but, it up. Well, so you, so you can get your project going. Okay, so yes. Here's one as, thing. As okay, anybody I, I, that I owns property. I understand that. Yes. Well, I, I own property. Okay, but he, so here's. Three, I'm talking about a situation where I just went, went to City Hall, we went through it, and I was in favor of it. Oh. Uh, you know, they stuck it by, but anyway, there was one lot where there was one house, they subdivided, they're gonna put three houses, but they did exactly what you're talking about. They wanted to pull an oak, okay, we agree with an oak. They're gonna, you know, anyway, wind up a little bit more, but the houses are placed in a way where it does give you a little bit of an open space because it's all communal, is what you're talking about. So, I, you know, I understand the, the, the concept. It's not the first time that I've been or seen these projects. But the bottom line, it comes back again. Um, the people that are gonna be affected is my part. Chavez Ravine, people were affected. They were moved. Those are people that were forcibly removed I understand. by a city action. This is privately owned property that's being developed as you would enjoy the same right on your property. No, I, I, so I'm not really following the metaphor. Well, well the metaphor, okay, well, the, the metaphor is this. It gets back to this. It's, if I have a piece of property, the gentleman just said, it might affect someone. It might, or to an extent. But if it affects me and my view, then it's a major problem. Like I'm telling you, if I'm looking at what do you call it, into Long Beach or, or Rose Hill uh, a Memorial Park, because you can see it on a clear day, now all of a sudden you build up a house, I can't see anything no more. All I'm looking at is this house. And I don't live on that street, but I'm just telling you that. Just to, okay, no, just to, just, okay. So your first issue was public access Wait, or, or pri uh, publicly access private. Correct. Lines. Okay. Correct. That's so very important. Is the so is the community garden, the Gross community garden, and the park? Is that going to stay private or privately owned, or is that public? Is it going to be public property? It's privately owned. Okay. So it'll be a privately owned public. Okay. Now no, I not, do, pri not public. It's it no, it's it, 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 it's privately owned mm -hmm. land. Okay. But it is publicly accessible. So there, there are a couple of projects in downtown that do this. Okay, I understand they that. So, so can they write it in, and write it, and they're going to say, you know, they well, are. Uh, well, I, I, I was going to leave that because uh, no, I was going to that because as a uh, yeah, or as a guideline. So well, so okay, so I do know there's one, I know I do know there's one there's one project in downtown. Uh, I believe it's like a ninth of Figaro or a ninth of Flower, something like that. They're like so. There, there's there's a little park parklet that cuts right through the block, and so. Uh, that parklet has to be open to the public between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So it's gated, and there's a gate, and it locks after 9 p.m. But if it's if it's locked before 9 p.m. or after 9 a.m., the community can go to the city and say, "Hey, it's locked," and then the the the, the person that owns that gets fined. I think they get fined like they they get fined on a per day basis. So that could happen. That could happen here. I'm not sure if it's, an, I don't know, so I don't know if, there's, if it's a, because of an ordinance or it was, it was like an agreement that was done between the developer and the city. But I'm just saying, like, like I understand, like, you know, okay, yeah, there's, no, there's thank, a... Thank you for mm -hmm. what you just said right now. So, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And see, there's a key point. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem if they're going to say, you know what, we are going to gate it. Tell me. I don't want to see a gate all of a sudden come up, and then you can't get access to it. If you're telling me, you know, hey, it's going to be closed within a certain amount of time, but it's, it's going to be open, then fine. But the key part here is, again, don't promote it as it's going to be always open, and then it's not. That's my key point. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah totally. You know, transparency yeah. is good. Yeah. That that that's all we're talking about. Oh, yeah, I'm trying, we're trying yeah. to bounce, no, no, trying no, to bounce and ideas. And I, that we, I that we appreciate could that because find it, the middle ground. Yeah, here, exactly. Ground. It's going to be like that. Yeah. I'm not against it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you do want people to be private up there, or or safe, if I could say that. And if it's going to be common ground where people are going to come in. And just to just to clarify how that what you're talking about there. So these uh, 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 stairways and pathways would be um, uh, privately owned, privately maintained, uh, built, privately maintained, publicly accessible. Okay. So uh, as opposed to the streets, which will which will be 
privately uh, privately constructed, but then basically deeded to the city. And those streets will be public streets. They will be maintained by all the city agencies and all that. It will be built privately uh, to those city standards and then given to the city as part of that public infrastructure. Can I play on that? Right now, you have kind of north the area on the north of the site and the area on the south of the site. It's very difficult to go between the two, almost impossible. I think there's one street and it's very narrow. This is giving you another option. Yeah, it's giving you a, a, two options to get emergency access between the two. And also, uh, because of one street is so expensive, it's it's multi-million dollar street. It makes the project iffy. I mean, I don't have the numbers, but the, the, but it's from my understanding is, and I've looked at this for a while now, I said, whoa, that street is very expensive, and it's, it's a make or break street. It's a make or break uh, item for the street, so. The community uh, gets that benefit. Um, Onyx, Barrel. <coughs> the, uh, the Knuckle Street. And I just want to just reiterate uh, what Kyoshi was saying about the density. We are not proposing increasing density here. We are asking for a zone change only. And what we're doing is we are building to R1 density on this project. So when we go back to density, we are building to one unit for 5,000 square feet, which is R1 density. And that is what we're talking so we're more we're building more compactly, but we're not building with greater density on this particular site. Average. To get you open yeah, space. Average. To get you open yeah, space. So that's what you're doing. That's right. So it allows us it allows us the flexibility. I mean some of some of the properties have um, you know, the house takes up, you know, the better part of the site. Others have a lot of extra site, a lot of extra land on their property. Right? On average, what we're that allows us to be far more um, when we talk about sustainability, what we're trying to do as architects, planners, scientists, we're trying to reduce the the, uh, the carbon footprint of a of a project. When we start to look at the actual built actual buildings, we're always trying to find ways to have less surface area for those buildings. And so that means there's less heat loss, heat gain. So let me ask you this: What's the, what's the average house going to go around? Do you guys have a number on the house? Uh, cost? Yeah, cost. To cost. buy. If they say somebody wants one of us, are we going to have an opportunity to buy? Yeah. So, so here it is again. But I'm serious. Because if we live in the neighborhood, we should be given an opportunity to be able to buy. Because here it goes back again. If the developer already has all his houses sold to people outside the neighborhood, and, and we don't have an opportunity, some of us could buy there. But are we going to be given that opportunity to buy that? Because like what you just said right now, there's people that want to live in small. But I'll tell you what, those those properties with a bigger uh, open space, those are going to be pretty nice properties to have. But here it is again. Who is going to be able to buy there? Is the community, are they going to be setting aside X amount of houses? You know what, we're building in your community. We're going to give... Uh, I don't know, a third of the homes, so that, again, <coughs> to the people, affordable housing, we call it. I'm in the affordable housing business. That's what I do. Okay? So is it gonna, is that gonna happen? We have, to, I can speak to that. We have been told by planning that there's a, a measure, JJJ, that became effective this year that requires a developments of this scale that they allocate a certain amount of the housing for affordable housing. We don't know exactly the numbers on that yet. Um, it's something we're working through with planning, but that is our understanding. So, see, but, see here, but no, I'm answering your I, question. I, I know you sir. are, but see, but we're falling. That's exactly. I understand. It. I'm not talking about. I, I, I can't, can't answer. You. If you have a theory about how these things work, we're following what the city planning department is telling us to do. Well, well I understand that, but we live here, so the city kind of, uh, you know, skirts around. You ask me if we'll be I, providing affordable I, I, I understand that, right. but but here's the point. So if you're providing it, then maybe you already know how much you're providing. If not, I can. Add, I'm telling you, yeah. we don't know. Okay. It's it's a percentage. I'm not sure how the tables work yet. 
I okay, can get so back then, to you. So then, okay, so then if that's okay, the okay, case, okay. are we going to get an opportunity? By the way, to I, I, th I think that's probably a discussion for later down the development because since they don't know, they don't have a number, they can't work with that because they don't, they don't know what. They don't know what the algorithm is to work with. They don't know the formula. So we need to get the so, algorithm on Well, yeah, so they can, they can get that as soon as you can get more time. Okay. So, you want that? Because they're already all sold to outside people. Okay. Tom, oh. give me the last comment for this project, and then we're going to move on to the discussion. All right. I highly recommend that the resolution from this committee to the board require an environmental impact report to explain the various differences, the view sheds, the ADA compliance, and how all of the public infrastructure will work with the existing infrastructure. That's all. ADA is very important. ADA, hmm? what you just said is very important. Any other you public bet, man. <laughs> Any other public comments? Okay. So. So next, you want to discuss them? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, can I respond to the EIR suggestion? Sure. We could not agree to that as being anything we could cooperate with. That is dictated by what the data tells you after the initial study of the environmental is done. So that it's a default or that you volunteer it in this case, we wouldn't preemptively agree to that. So is there a, a, a report already been put out? It's in process. Okay. So, that will be circulated when uh, it's submitted to the city and it's available. The initial study will comment. be the basis of deciding on whether to go with a mitigated negative declaration exactly. and or environmental impact report. If there is controversy and differences between experts, then it commonly will go to an EIR. Mm -hmm. City of Los Angeles generally goes to a mitigated negative deck, but this is somewhat like health and health. Oh, let's not go there. Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to go ahead? Do you want to go ahead? All right. Ready. 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 Can you double it? Can you double your project size? Good as that go. Alternative and alternative. Transit priority here. Go to the general. Then you can talk to the we can keep our comments for you now, discuss all that, and then keep our work for all of us. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, what are your comments about the project? Uh, okay, so with the project, um, I like the project. I like the thinking. I like that it's compact. It's, envir it's You guys are trying to be environmentally friendly. You guys are trying to get, you know, you're trying to get some more eco uh, people out of their cars by building stairways and access you know, between the top and the bottom of the community. Um, I do have community. I do have concerns like Manuel has brought up of like you know of a private of a, of a public of a private public access point, and uh, also at the same time that public private access point at certain times of the day can bring a some undesirables. So, uh, but I think that could be like solutions to that can be figured out at a later time. Correct? It's still still kind of early. So we can still work on that part. So that's like, that's just like my biggest concern, along with my is Yeah, it's just pub the public access. But other than that, so far, I, I like it. You don't ride the bus. I do ride the bus, actually. I do. And they took out one bus stop. I actually, just, just as a side note, and the I, other ones Tom, 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 just to let you know, I do not own a car. I have never owned a car. I do not desire to own a car. I get around on public transportation. So. I, so I, I'm a pro walker. It's a rarity in LA. I know it is. So like when the project comes here, I'm looking for pro transit, pro community engagement, pro pedestrian, pedestrian walkways, stuff like that. So he's adding, you know, they're adding stairwells in public, in public rights away. I like that. They're adding trees as he 
walk it between public between public bus stops. It's great because in July when it's hot and it's 110 degrees outside with a shade, you have no idea how great that is. So I do know at the last meeting they were saying that there, there's a safety requirement that for every tree you get that you have to have three more. Is that correct? We're meeting all the yeah well, tree well, well yeah no but I'm just saying like yeah and like, yeah well and then uh, there was so like obviously the lot is not going to be able to accommodate all the trees that you need to add. They were saying that they want they're going to add it along Mission Boulevard. That stretch of Mission in Huntington has no trees on the sidewalk. So if you add a tree on that side, that, that stretch, it's great. And to clarify, dear, we said we would look into that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. I was so excited. I was so excited. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, no. I'm already looking forward to the shaded Huntington to Drive walking down the street. I'm sorry. Okay. But no, but I mean, like, yeah, we're going in the right direction. You know, you guys, you guys have been very, very well accommodated. You guys have listened to our concerns. Uh, you know, we'll. We still are in the process, so we will we will you know we, we will further we will have future meetings as they go on the development process and we will add more input. So. David, I believe the option was if the community didn't want or wanted to green mm -hmm. uh, Huntington or Mission, not all the trees needed to be put here. It could, the, the cost of those trees could be uh, put in the funds to do uh, city south urban forest. Okay, all right. Something. But you have to be designated through the work of the council office, but it can be done. Okay. There are excess trees. It's pretty filled up as it is, and the position is it's kind of open to interpretation by urban forestry. So there's options there. Okay. And it's a recommendation you can make. Okay. All right. Sounds good. It's called Seafoam. Thanks, John. Community board. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that with the office, or is that with the uh, board of the public board? Thank you. All right. Uh, any comments, Marissa? Yeah. I I like that you are improving the streets. And in regards to your comment, I think it will give the opportunity to other families in the neighborhood to buy those homes, which is really good, because there is not a lot of homes available in this area to for people for families to buy. Um, I believe too it will bring more commerce to the area, which we need more growth in the commerce, and you know it will create a balance for the families. You know, and I, and I think you were very supportive of the. Um, was a project as, as well, so I think it, it's it's towards the road of a positive growth for the neighborhood, and you know that the project is beautiful and it enhances the the hillside the way it's designed. So it is um, it, it's a great project for the neighborhood. So we can take a vote, and and then after we take a vote, we will take it to the general uh, board. Uh, yeah, so um, what will be our resolution? Tentative uh, approval or tentative recommendation of the, of the project? Yes. Pending, pending certain conditions. Would that work, Tom? If I could. I'm Would it, a tentative, a tentative, uh, tentative recommendation on the, with, with the board. A tentative approval. Let's see, well, let's see. I'm trying to think of that word in here. So, a tentative approval to the board, is that a recommendation to the board, or is it too early to do that? I think it's too early. No, no, I'm asking, no, in terms, of, in terms of like parliamentary procedures, or is that, is that too open? Uh, you can do it, you can make a recommendation to the board on the end, but based upon this, it should be a question as to do you approve it. As it is stated now, do you uh, recommend that the board approve the project mm -hmm. as it ends? Or wait until the environmental CEQA considerations have been done and review it at that time. Because CEQA has not been conducted. So what they're saying here can change a lot between now and whenever they start to. When, when did you say the initial study is going to be out? It will be probably submitted to the city in three, three to four weeks. And then I'm not sure how long after that the city has to review it and then they circulate it to the public for commentary. There's, public still. Yeah. there's not a hearing on that specifically that's for Is public commentary <coughs> and then the hearing comes after that. Mm -hmm. Anthony, um, might be yeah, I think the question is, um, you know, the community, whether we want to vote now or wait until we get more data. That's up to the committee to decide. Okay. That's up to the committee. How can you make a decision now when there's only half a dozen of us here? I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who wanted to be here, but I don't see them here. That's, unfortunately, that's their choice. 
No, I, I have talked to people in the last time. Mm -hmm. You guys were at City Hall. Nobody received an email about going to this downtown to talk about this. And right now, I bet you if I go home, I'll find out that a lot of people didn't get emails or notified of this meeting. And there's a lot of people I know who are against this project. And I guess, they're not here. I guess the question is, what, what um, outreach did you do to the community to let them know about yeah. today's meeting? There was, a, there was a notice put up in the library, correct? Yeah, there it was, was posted. So besides Saturday. the minimum well, compliance for no, so, okay, so it was posted. So it was, post, it was posted in the library on Saturday. Um, I do know it was posted on the LA32 Facebook Facebook group, uh, Facebook page, because I saw I saw it on my feed. Uh, so if you're not if if you're on Facebook and you see it there, you can you can still see it there. Um, as far as I know, there's no email because I don't get an email. We emailed oh. everybody that had signed up at the previous four meetings. Mm -hmm. We sent an email to everybody who had signed up on the contact list. How big is your email? It's over 30 people. Okay. That was outreach from yeah. Okay. Okay. We will continue, um, and um, we'll work on Saturday issues of the community. I would uh, just our position yeah. on that. The the notion of waiting for the environmental. We're not going to bring the environmental here and debate that. That's yeah. an issue for the city to right. resolve through the publication process. Um, and many neighborhood councils take their positions prior to that. Uh, so, and that, will, when we come back, that will be our sixth time. It'll be our fourth time here, and our sixth time total doing outreach to stakeholders. So, at some point, we'll have to exit this committee and go onto the governing board, so just putting that out there. I'm not sure what substantive, substantively will change from now until next month. Tom should know that the project has not changed Markedly, we've listened to the comments that we could address and made some changes, but your questions about sewer lines and infrastructure, there will be no further answers on those next month. So, uh, well, I'm cautious about delaying tactics as, as well. Who's the contact in the Bureau of Engineering? Sorry, what's that? Who is the contact? Georgic of Georgia. Georgia? Georgic. So is the is the uh, mitigation report? Will that? So I know that that would be between you guys and the city. Will that will that be like for public view? It's you circulating, also? and it's not okay. the mitigate. It's the initial study before the city determines whether it's it's called an MND or. Yeah. or so or, the the biggest thing that I would like for you guys again, because um, we know you can handle all the drainage and all that stuff. This stuff tonight. Our biggest thing is: Are you providing affordable housing? Or how many homes are going to be available? for community members to buy. Because the bottom line is, that's the important part. If you're gonna build your project, which I think you are, how many stakeholders in the community are gonna have an opportunity to buy? Can I ask you and, a question about sure. that? If they're put on the market, available yes. for anybody, yes. which is what our intention is, Correct. isn't does that meet the standard of being accessible for community well, members? Well, when you're talking about affordable housing. We're not going to market them to people I, I, somewhere I, I else. I understand that, okay, I'm just talking about it. Are you going to set a percentage for affordable housing? And we've answered that. We're okay. mandated by okay. state public. Okay, so how can we find out, uh, or what is the avenue to find out how many of those homes are going to be made available for affordable housing? I can try to get an answer Please. on that. Th that's, that's important, important to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. But, it, but for me, it's how many people are going to be able to get the affordable housing on that aspect? I know people are going to be able to buy them, but I'm just talking about where are you going to set aside of your inventory X amount that are going to be able to be affordable. The, I think the best sorry. you're going to get I'm is sorry, a percentage. Can, can, uh, I, can I interrupt this meeting? I'm, 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 I'm We want to present on our project 191 units of, of, that are affordable housing projects. Like, a, we have a big project too. We really would want to talk to you guys about it. Where's okay. that? So, okay, wait, wait, wait. Yes. okay, okay, okay. We don't get started. Okay, all right. All right. The time I, you I, need I, to I be upset. Oh my God. I know okay. saying, We didn't have time to hear about it, and it's like, well, we, you right. know. Okay. Item six. Come on, so give us some love over here. Please. Okay, all right, okay. I, okay, item yeah, five. Okay. Hey, where's your image, you guys? Item five. Okay, item five is not closed. Yeah, let's take a vote. Okay. So, our recommendation let's take a vote. Okay, if you are in favor or oppose the project. I'm in favor of the project. Okay, I'm in favor too, and this recommendation will be taken to the general committee. 
and we will present it to the full board. Okay. What can okay. you make? Can you can you can you say the motion, please? Yes, the motion is we support uh, the Onyx 32 project, and it will be uh, presented to the general board for a, for approval for recommendation as well. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go to the, the next item. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Which is number six. Thank you, guys, for your patience. Don't go anywhere, man. We'll do it till nine o'clock. All I want to know is how did you get the Bahia and Rose Hill? That's my problem. <laughs> Okay, my way. I get a stay in the. Oh, I'm on a With who now? We, we Hakla. 
The Housing Authority. Housing Authority. If you hear them say Virginia. HACLA, it's okay. short for the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles. Oh, so it's like POTUS. But she's related, well, right. California. Yeah. Yeah. Now, who is the private person that's related to California? So related is the private developer, and HACLA is the Housing Authority. We are a public agency. Um, we were founded in 1938 um, to um, bring affordable housing to the City of Los Angeles. Um, the Rose Hills property is one of our first endeavors in that. It was built out in the early 1940s um, on five acres of land. We actually, when we started, had many, many more acres of land uh, that were intended to be developed um, uh, right around Rose Hills that now is what you look at as far as Devs Park and many of the parklands that you have around you and the development itself sized all the way down to that five acres that we have now. Um, Rose is kind of. We got some slides for that. Yeah, we have. Well, and we have a nice big board. Um, but we. There you go. One more. Yeah, should be good. There you go. Yeah. So we um, we're right up on Huntington Drive, um, over by the, the rec center, um, and uh, right at the tip of where Ernest Ed Park kind of comes down into the community. So we're in a lovely, absolutely bucolic area. Um, we love the neighborhood. Um, we've been a long time owner there. Um, our residents, uh, most of them, a lot of them have been in the neighborhood for 40 or 50 plus years themselves. Um, this is their home and, uh, and we are looking to improve our property um, and it's been a long time coming. We have um, some significant issues with the property. I'm going to let Rose kind of talk through um, kind of how we got to where we are today and then share with you where we're headed and, and hopefully just open up to, to start uh, a conversation with you guys about it. Thank you, Jenny. And I'm going to introduce a couple more members of our team. We've got uh, Maurizio is with Lindy Malcolm Architects, who's also here. Uh, George over there and Kristen are helping us with outreach, and we'll talk a little bit uh, about kind of who, who we've talked to in the neighborhood as well and the, and the outreach we've done. But um, what we wanted to do is sort of just walk you through sort of how we got here, give you a little bit of background, and then talk a little bit about where we are today, and then also talk a little bit about kind of what our next steps are. So. I'll let the ride come forward along a little bit for me here. Um, so you probably know this site pretty well. It's as Jenny said, this uh, this is a housing development that was built in the 1940s. It's public housing, so it's publicly owned, um, and it is low income affordable housing. And we have been working related, and the housing authority have been working together since uh, 2015 to study, you know, what what needs to be done at this property. And I'm going to. Keep going to the right there. So what really kind of spurred this for the housing authority was that these buildings are now getting getting on in years, and you know over time there has been some deterioration and some issues in terms of buildings getting old and getting run down. So um, this gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the some of the conditions. Uh, there is some water damage. Um, just keep going. You know, as the buildings that were built sort of you know, before we knew about lead and asbestos issues, so there are some, you know, lead and asbestos issues with the existing buildings that need to be addressed. Um, it's also a very steeply sloped site, as you know, it's kind of, as you go up towards Ernest Debs, the site sort of starts to slope up the hill. Um, and for the population that's there, which we'll talk about in a minute, this is um, a population that is now getting increasingly elderly, um, and there are some folks who are disabled, and the challenge with this site, the way it is as it stands today, is that there's a lot of stairs, there's a lot of sort of steep sidewalks. Um, it's got some challenges in terms of accessibility. And I would say last but not least, um, there's some termite issues on the site, which you know Hecla has addressed. They've treated the termites, but some of the damage, as we as they opened up units, they discovered that there's a fair amount of damage in some of the units. And in fact, some of the units remain vacant, and they are not being released to tenants because of the the conditions of the units. So, I think, um, and I don't want to speak on behalf of the housing authority, but rather than sort of let this kind of continue. I think it got to the point where it was like something has to be done in this site. You know, it has to be made right for the folks who live there. Um, we want to do the right thing for them in terms of giving them high quality housing and something that's going to last a long time. Uh, so, uh, originally, a lot of the thinking was centered around, well, do we do a you know an extensive rehab of this property? Do we you know 
kind of do a gut rehab, take off all the stucco, take off the drywall, redo all this framing, you know, bring them back up to, um, you know, good quality units. And that was, we spent a, a fair amount of time studying that. And that was a lot of the thinking originally. Um, and I think after, after doing that study, I think one of the challenges we found was, you know, in any event, it's going to be costly. But with rehab, we would really struggle to address the uh, accessibility. Um, and we'd also, you know, be limited in terms of the unit sizes. Um, keep going a little bit. Talk about. And also energy efficiency. Degraded community building, basically what that means is um, there is a community building on that property that you, you know, may or may not know about. It's, it's, um, it's not used very much right now because it's, it's kind of past its, its uh, useful life. Um, there are periodic meetings there for the residents, but in terms of an amenity for the community, it's not really serving that, that function. Um, and it also has some termite damage. So that was one of the considerations too, is just, you know, for the residents that are there, this community center is not really, it's not really meeting their needs. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, one of the biggest things I think we ran into when we looked at doing a rehab was that there are, you know, 91 households out there on this, on the site, and then when we uh, do a rehab, uh, the challenge we had was that we have a certain mix of units. So we have a certain amount of one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. And as you can see, um, we have a mixture of households there. As we mentioned, there's a, a, a large proportion there that are elderly. So you know, 41% of the residents are elderly, and 58% of the households have an elderly resident. Um, there's also about a third of the residents who are disabled. And when taking the two populations together, you have about half of the households have a disabled or elderly member. So that was a consideration for us. And then at the <coughs> bottom, this sort of gets into sort of technical um, housing authority and, and, and Section 8 kind of uh, language. But I, I, I'll try and put it in a nutshell. And, and Raj, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But what we're trying to do is when we renovate this, um, and we work in partnership with the housing authority, it's going to transition from public housing to becoming um, a low income housing tax credit project. And we're going to use Section 8 vouchers on this site. So currently it's under sort of HUD's public housing world. And we're going to transition it to another part of HUD, which is Section 8. So uh, when we do that transition, the residents, the rents don't change, but because they're under a new you know, Section 8 voucher, what HUD requires the housing authority to do is to make sure that none of the folks are in a unit that's too big. So if you have a senior who's currently in a two bedroom, HUD says, well, you know, that person needs to be in a one bedroom because that's what the, the voucher will only allow. So rather than try to, um, what, what the challenge is, is that if you have what you can see on the bottom here, a, a fair amount of these households are what are called overhoused, and that just means that you have someone who's a, a single person or two-person household, and they're in a unit that's bigger than what HUD says they need. So you may have a, you know, a couple in a three-bedroom unit. So with the rehab, if we just rehab the units, when we would try to bring everybody back, some of them couldn't come back because we could not provide enough one-bedroom units. So this site needs about. I think it's on the next slide. We need about 32 more one-bedroom units in order to quote unquote right size the folks that are living there. So this was, I think, kind of the biggest sticking point uh, for us as a team was if we just rehab the units, well, great, we'll have all these two and three bedroom units, but then the folks who are living there, you know, a good portion of them would not be able to come back because HUD would say, no, you can't come back to a two bedroom unit or you can't come back to a three bedroom unit. So it was very important in terms of the goals for this site was that the folks who are living there, they've been there a long time, uh, they're you know part of the community, and we do not want them to have to relocate as part of this uh, as part of this redevelopment. So, uh, long story short, and after sort of a couple years of analysis, um, we said we think the rehab is not the way to go because it doesn't allow all the residents to come back. And it also doesn't allow those who are sort of elderly and disabled. We, we, can, we could probably make some of the units handicap accessible, but not all 100 under a rehab. It would just be very challenging. And a lot of these units are also townhomes, so they have an internal stair. So it's, it's pretty much, you know, when you have a, a two-story unit, you can't make it accessible. So that is the sort of in a nutshell <laughs> we got here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about 
Uh, let me let me stop and let me ask if there's any questions at this point. Okay. So question. Okay. So currently, it's public housing, correct? Correct. Run. Is it so now? Is it is it's owned by the public, but is it run by a private company, or is it all run publicly? Right now, it's city. It's owned by the housing authority. Right. So, okay. so it's currently, yeah, we currently own and manage the property um, right. no. under uh, as as public housing. Um, and I think one of the good things about the privatization uh, concept of the idea of doing this redevelopment is. So right now, because of the way HUD funds us, we have very little, we have very few dollars for operations and, and capital investment. There's no way for us to continue to maintain the property with the dollars that we have. So we have to, we have to do something. We have to do the shift in order to bring the dollars to the table. Um, but it also gives us this opportunity to do a new operating model. Um, so right now, we share management with our um, with our Ramona site. So we don't have on-site managers. Under the new model um, that we're hoping to, to build out, we'll actually be able to be much, much more, um, we'll have a higher operating budget, so we'll be much more invested in the property. We'll actually be able to have a bunch of on-site managers um, who are there constantly on a day-to-day -day basis, managing the site, managing services. We'll have funding for service coordination, so we'll actually have active services on-site. So it just changes the model completely for us. Okay. So my understanding is, again, you provide affordable housing. Um, the lease of people is a great example of of what I don't know if it was the county when they when they did and rehab that place. That was Hackla. Yeah. yeah. And it was a real nice project. I mean, I, I fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah. So it, it, you know, I'm in agreement with that. I think it's great. Um, so. So it's, like, it's similar in a lot of ways. It's, this I, is I would imagine it's, 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 that's, the, that's the way we're going now, right. if I could say that. Yes. Uh, the, you know, the big thing for me is um, I'm in affordable housing in a very small way. And the, the thing for myself is where did the bidding go so you can get involved in that, to get a stake in it? You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if you're taking care of the community, you take care of me. Of, of people that want to also provide affordable housing. We've been providing affordable housing. My dad has, better yet. And I have continued in that. Uh, not a lot of units, nothing. In a new school, if I can say it like that. But somebody started somewhere. Mr. Teleku started somewhere, so there's different people. So how, that's my biggest thing is, um, who gets the contract? Sorry, how do you get <laughs> How do you get involved? You know what I'm saying? I've been in you know, that that's my concern. So thank you and um, yeah, that's a good question. Well, yeah, I mean usually I don't know, I wasn't here when we brought related on, so yeah, Raj, you can talk yes. about that. So, so <coughs> we started the process back in twenty fourteen when he came out with a request for for qualifications. Mm -hmm. Wait, question, and, and, so is this related, same related that's supposed to do the Grand Avenue project related? Okay. Same parent company. Okay. okay. So Just related, there's the market rate side and the affordable side. So we're the affordable side. Okay. But, but going back to your question about Aliso, so that was done by Relate. Yeah. In no. partnership with the uh, McCormick. No, no I, I understand that. It was a great project. I, I mean, it was, it's but, a way win for everybody. Yeah, we normally, uh, we are required yeah, by we HUD to, to put out a, a request for proposals. Um, so we go, we have to solicit for development partners. Um, so we, we normally do that and put it out broadly to the development community and put it out through the city's procurement process. And so if you're on any list within the city or within HACLA, you would have gotten a solicitation. I, I, I could tell you a story where I had an opportunity when uh, it was Mission and Broadway and they were starting the project there. And uh, Steve calls me and Steve says, you want to get involved because I've got a property for him. And I said, no, I, the worst thing I should have said, because he invited me for the project, and I said no. But now I realize, come back and say, oh my gosh, he was giving me an opportunity. But I go, what did I know? Kidding. I'm learning. <laughs> so, so it is what it is. So you yeah. just kind so of keep going. they responded to a solicitation. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was a, it was a competitively big project. Yeah. Uh, so we, we came out with an RFP. We put it on the LA Bavin website. Sure. Uh, it was on Hackland website as well. Were you on Bavin? No. Yeah. I'm it's a Los Angeles I'm business. I'm it's a business. Business. <laughs> get on the grid. Yeah. That's how you get the opportunity. Really get on the grid. So we I'm have, on it. <laughs> there you go. Tire everywhere. <laughs> so, so we had around uh, seven or eight people responding to that, and and we went through the qualification process. We had a team of panelists review it, 
Nice. Then based on all the qualifications, we scored all the proposals, and related came on top. Related is best. Then that's how they. Best. Is it related? Related? I don't work for related. I work for housing authority. <laughs> <laughs> Co-venture. Yeah. All good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is, uh, Are the rents going to be the same as now or different? They'll stay the same. So the tenants pay under the current model, they pay 30% of their income. And that is, it's capped at 30% of their income, and so that will stay the same. They'll be subsidized by Section 8. So yeah, correct. Yes. Exactly. So there's a sub yes. Yeah, there's a sub yeah, there's a yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, correct. Okay, so what's the yeah. project? All right. What's the project? Woohoo, project. So there's um, three kind of big things that, we, that we're trying to do. So, and I touched on the first one, and the, the first big one is we want the residents to be able to, um, to return to the site. So whatever we do, we want them to come back. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to min minimize disruption to the tenants. So that means, you know, to the extent that we have to do construction out there, we want to limit how much um, time they're going to be off-site for temporary location. And we have a video, too. Uh, and then a third is a big goal for both related and for the housing authority is that we want to increase the supply of affordable housing. So this, this site is an opportunity of sorts. It's five acres. You don't really get these types of properties very often. And we would like to, um, you know, as part of the investment in this site is to not only, you know, return the residents who live there now, but also increase the supply of affordable housing. So the entire property, we're talking, you know, here we talk about phase one and phase two, we're talking about all affordable housing here. So. That was a big goal and a, and a big, a big thing for us. So, let me. I think we got to show and tell now a little bit. Um, I would also, yes. you know, just to talk about goals and, and community input. I mm -hmm. think the other thing is that we recognize that um, that we had an opportunity here to, to completely redesign the site, to to integrate it into the neighborhood, and to to really sort of um, create kind of a new page for um, for this for this community. Um, so I think that what we really want to try to do here is uh, is to achieve that. Um, we've heard a lot from the community, from um, from members of the community that live around the area about how important it was for them to, to feel like they could penetrate the site, to feel like it was open to them, to feel like there was um, there was ability to, to, to access some of the amenities that might be built into the site. So we uh, we looked at how we can better consolidate that that community amenity. Um, so I think you'll hopefully see, start to see some of the some of the design speaking to those objectives and those values. So I just just in terms of it's not I mean we definitely want to bring in more affordable housing. We want to keep our tenants returned, but we also recognize that we are part of a much larger community fabric. Um, and so um, you know that's why we're here today to start getting that feedback from you guys to make sure that we're hearing that as well, and we're we're really designing a site that will be able to you know stay a part of this community you'll be proud of for many, many years to come. Well, so, yeah. yes, thank you. You can get that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to talk too, too much because I'd rather have you guys ask questions, but just to kind of uh, walk you through a little bit how we're planning to do the, the redevelopment. And so an, an important thing was, I think, our idea was to phase this development. So you can see here, these are the um, existing buildings. and. So most of these have, you know, folks living in them. This is their, their homes. And instead of sort of redoing the whole site at once where everyone has to move off site while we're doing construction and then everyone has to move back, what we're trying to do is to just uh, start with phase one, which is just in this northeast corner. So the just to orient you, the Rose Hill Recreation Center is down here. Um, and this is the Rose Hill Park and this is Ernest Depp's Park up here. So we're going to start, if, if you know, if we get to move forward, we, our, our plan would be to just take down these buildings, and that way only some of the units where folks are living, those folks would have to move off site during the construction of phase one, but the rest of the folks living in, you know, the remainder of the property can stay on site while we're building the first phase. And then what that does is it just means that not, that not as many people will have to be living off site during construction. Um, and what we, we did with the sizing of phase one is made it 94 units so that it's big enough for all the current households to move into. So once this phase is complete, anyone who was offsite can move back in and it, what the, the folks living in these buildings can also move into phase one. So phase one really represents the existing folks and the existing population. Um, and that, you know, once phase one's complete and everyone moves in, that frees up phase two to become a, sort of a second um, new construction project 
and that would bring additional housing for families onto the site. So let's go to the next. And I was going to talk about the fact that the design is going to be the right size, so that the design is such a way that everyone can do it. Yeah, so one of the big things, as we mentioned, was this issue of, you know, we need a lot more one bedrooms, we don't have them, so the design of phase one is going to have the right size of units and the right number of units so that folks can move back and they'll be in the unit um, that's quote unquote right size for them. So if you're a single person, you'll get a one bedroom, if you're a family, you'll get a larger unit, and it sort of removes this whole issue of folks not being able to come back because of the unit sizes. So. Uh, so this is sort of showing the, once we're built out on both phases, this is what the site plan would look like. So you can see in phase one, it's really this, this band here. Um, and these are two four-story buildings with surface parking. And phase two is where we really kind of get to build out the rest of the site. And it's more of a mix of unit types. So phase two has sort of townhomes, stacked flats. Um, these are stacked flats and these are townhomes. So what we're trying to do is provide a mix of different housing types to serve sort of a broader range of folks. Um, and then what we're also trying to do is incorporate a new community building, which I think is a big, um, it, it was one of the important things, both for the folks who are living there, who, um, you know, they want, they want a place to have, you know, senior services, they want to have after school care, they want to have a gym, you know, a lot of things that we, you know, that, that they don't have access to right now, is going to be built into that, into that new building. Um, and then a, another important part of this is providing sort of nice open space. And as Jenny mentioned, um, the way this sits within the broader neighborhood is very important because folks, you know, as they're walking from their residences and they're going to the park, we want them to have that experience of walking through a neighborhood and a community and having that, you know, eyes on the streets. You've got people with front doors on the street that it feels like you're walking through an established community. So that we're trying to bring that, that neighborhood fabric um, feeling throughout the entire site. And we're, yes, we talked a little bit about design. So we're, we're actually, at this stage, we really just have sort of a massing. We have an overall idea for, you know, the overall development of the site. We don't actually have a design yet. We wanted to kind of talk to folks first. Um, and we'll come back when we have sort of more developed drawings. Um, these were just some sort of initial images that we have been um, using for folks to kind of react to. So we've been talking about one option being craftsman, which is a, is a popular style and you know, obviously you see throughout uh, this part of LA. And then the other option we were looking at was something that was a bit more contemporary, a bit more modern. And um, we're actually just open to feedback and have been asking folks to sort of say what they like and what they don't like and the residents have had an opportunity to weigh in as well. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. I think I've, we should do the video because the video is much better than the, the two dimensional <laughs> stuff. This is old school. Right? Yeah, this is. Clarification, yeah. you mentioned this four story. stories, mm -hmm. but all of these are three stories? Mixture, yeah. I think this one, that one is four with the roof deck, yeah. And that one is four as well. Yeah, yeah it's four. Two, three, four. So we have a mixture of two to four on, as part of this. So we have some uh, four and we have some two. An issue right now, especially this weekend, mm -hmm. is transit priority areas. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to go up to mm -hmm. six and you're within the transit priority area. Oh yeah, good. Bill, good Senate Bill 743 mm -hmm. is in effect right now through city ordinance. And Question as to 827, mm -hmm. whether it will go through, but even under 743, projects are being proposed along Broadway yeah. as a transit priority area. So you, we, you want us to go higher? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, you, 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 you have an opportunity. The yeah. city ordinance mm -hmm. says you can go to, and it was uh, 74. 74 or 78 feet, or sorry, 84 feet. Mm -hmm. And this is a good site. You have open a oh, lot of open lot space of on the north side. Yeah, it's it's right behind behind the house is way up on top. Would you mind? Would you mind? Yes, yes, yes. I'm agreeing with you, though. I don't care whether you agree with me. Well, I do. And you have the Rose Hill mm -hmm. Recreation Center already. Yeah. So, my say, it seems that this is a good site. Mm -hmm. If you could get bus 
252 improved, that would be yeah. great. But that would just get you down to Monterey Road and Huntington, where you have more than two bus lines yeah. operating at less than 15 minute headways during the commute, both morning and evening. So, might say the opportunity is there. Yeah. The question is, why aren't you using it? I think that um, you know we wanted to uh, you know we wanted to sort of temper um, the density with what is around us and then I will use that as a city policy mm -hmm. in one department mm -hmm, is right. to reflect the surrounding community because this weekend there's a couple big meetings regarding transit priority areas Sierra Club. Yeah. Transportation Committee versus Environmental Justice has the same it's, issue. It, yeah, it's a, I mean, density is always a hot button issue, and as, uh, as we know. This um, weekend. Yeah. It's, if you it's state that you're going to reflect the surrounding neighborhood mm -hmm. as a city department, <laughs> this, this that's an it's, interesting yeah, I mean, as I said, I think it's a temperament, issue. right? So it's recognizing that, that you know, what's built around this this area is for the most part, you know. Uh, I've lived singles, here for know, over 30 years. Two, three, I know it's two, a three story good. max because it's, you're, you've got the hillsides which make it look like it's got, you know, some heights that it doesn't have, but it's, it's mostly R1, R2. Right. Um, you know, and we've got some interesting land adjacent to us though, you know, so on the, on the one side we've, we've got the school and we've got the church and we've got a lot of open space. So we felt that that gave us a little bit more opportunity to, to do something higher than what you're seeing on uh, on the other side of the neighborhood, but we didn't want to necessarily, you know, go mad with density. I just don't think that that's appropriate. Plus, we also it's think not that going. It's city ordinance, I'm, and you, what I'm you're not, saying is that this particular, <laughs> <laughs> this, this particular department, this particular department, will not. Okay, so Tom is on the record. He wants more density. Yeah. 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 By the way, you will never say that. I was going to say, I wrote it down. Well, no, we I wrote it down. I don't know if I'm going to react to it. I am saying that there is a city ordinance. I am saying that there is a city ordinance, yes. a law. Yeah. And that it's a hot button issue right now. And if one department says, no, we don't want to go that way, but the city's planning department says, oh, yeah, we're going to approve. 14 stories along Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a conflict of policy we get it. by ordinance. Welcome we get to it. Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually. It's all in Los Angeles. <coughs> Welcome to California. We actually, in terms of, we're about 38 units per acre. So in, under the city's classification, we fall a sort of medium density. And so we thought this was kind of a good. It's not it's not suburban low density. It's not sort of downtown high density. We're right kind of in the middle. We thought that was just kind of a nice sweet spot. It's northeast. Yeah, we thought it was a good good balance yes. for this site. So that's why we have. And know, if you look at the transit priority corridors, mm -hmm. it includes Figueroa, mm -hmm. Huntington Drive, mm -hmm. not Valley, but Valley may come next year. Yeah. So you have ordinances right now. Yeah. No, we don't. That you're not using mm -hmm. to maximize the floor area and thereby the maximum number of units for people. And my only other question is can you give long term residents, not owners, of 90032 right to first refusal? So we, we, don't, we can't, uh, by fair housing law, we can't necessarily provide preferences um, for, uh, for geographic areas. However, what we do is we market locally first. And so we definitely, we definitely make sure that the local neighborhood council, the local residents, um, you guys know about when the units are going to open, when we're going to uh, open up. We'll put, our, the, bill, we'll our put the billboards list. up for you. Yeah, we'll yeah. have the word out. We'll yeah, so we out. definitely, we definitely on all of our projects um, have have really tried very, very hard to to offer that opportunity locally first, um, and then we, you know, kind of shut down our our kind of opening pretty quickly <coughs> when we have a reasonable amount of. Folks coming in, so so hopefully we, we do get local folks. Also for veterans, you mentioned disabled mm -hmm. and elderly, mm -hmm. but also veterans. Sure. Yeah. We don't. Ha um, yeah, we don't have necessarily a, a preference, preference or yeah. or, a, or 
portions of the housing laid out specifically for veterans, and we're not doing a population specific housing type. But that being said, phase, the, the first phase is, is really um, meant to, yeah. to be for the residents who are there. The, the second phase is still somewhat open as to, you know, exactly how we're going to finance it and who the folks, you know, so yeah. it doesn't mean that there's an impossibility, but, Phase you know, two. Yeah. <coughs> oh, we, we, yeah, we definitely would like folks' input. I mean, we, we see it as, um, at, in terms of the current market need, that there is need for, for additional family housing um, in, the, in the neighborhood. Um, so we, you know, sort of are thinking along the lines of doing kind of a, a reasonable sort of family housing development in phase two. That's what our thinking has been to date, but we are definitely open to hearing that something else from the population of folks here. Are, like are we open to comment right now? Are we kind of a public comment now? Or is oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 no, yeah. Um, I went to couple meetings, uh, met with you guys, and sat and read through this. And I think that what you're doing right now is fine. Four, four stories in one section, and the rest uh, two stories. I, I think if we went any higher than that, it would be a big issue in the community because you know we have more density, more cars, uh, less parking. So I think you guys already marketed this as what it is, and to, to go back and go, go higher would be a big mistake because people already have heard it from you as being one thing. And so I think what you have is balanced, and to go any way uh, higher or, or larger or taller is, a, is would be would be wrong. I think it would be not what people would want to see or have in that area or community. Is there any possibility that you will change the number of units that are being proposed currently right now to something else? I, I think. Again, our site plan reflects the number of units that we think is appropriate um, and sized right for the community. Um, you know, but again, we're ready to. You know, we're hearing feedback at this point, and if, if there's a good argument for us to to reduce, and people want to share with us those concerns or what those arguments might be, we're here to listen. So we want to hear from everybody. Uh, we want the varied opinions that we think are out there, and 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 then give us some time to react to them. Question or to increase? Well, so, yeah. so, so I, I had two questions. questions. Two, two questions. First question was in regards to density. Well, density seems fine to me. In fact, I would like you to actually increase it a little bit, maybe like 200, 205. But the question is, uh, are you guys subject? Are you guys required under uh, LA's parking ordinance to have, like, you know, like one, one and a half unit, one and a half parking spaces per bedroom, or are you guys ex exempt from that? Because it's affordable, that it has a reduced parking requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have that one for one or one point two five for one okay. bedroom. So that yeah, okay. and, and that's you know that's the one sort of thing that I think communities get well, say, yeah, concerned yeah, about. Yeah, that's our, and, and for me, like for me, I'm like uh, for me, I actually advocate less parking. Mm -hmm. If I had my way, every bedroom would every bedroom would get half a parking spot. And every studio we get a quarter of a parking spot. Yeah. Just because parking adds a lot of money, a lot of capital costs to projects. There are a lot of there are there are a lot of hey, we have different opinions. But, but you don't drive, I know that. I know, yeah. That's, no. that's the reason why you're saying that. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. But also at the same time, like that's what a lot of people have. Like the density yeah. is like, oh no, you're you're gonna have like hundred units here, there's gonna be two hundred parking spots, so there's gonna be like two hundred cars going through here. But if you reduce that down to like let's say seventy five parking spots, mm -hmm. not everyone needs to drive. I'm an example of that. Not no, everybody needs to drive. You know what? And they qualify because they're less than a yes. mile away from a parking spot. So yeah. they, they, they already got another variance. So they're, so. they're good. Well, no, yeah. no, but that, that was the question. I'm not saying you need yeah. to. Yeah. Just, yeah. Know, yeah. Currently, yeah. Our, our residents are, um, are, you know, we, we have 80 available spaces. Yeah, 80 um, for 100 units. Uh, yeah. That's so we have 80 available spaces. We found, we actually just did a survey to find that only 30 of our residents um, have asked for parking permits, which means only 30 households are, are are officially asking for parking permits for their cars. So we know that our, our current group of, of residents who would be making up kind of our first project are not, they, they like you, do not necessarily own cars. You, um, you could use the city of Los Angeles, Cornfields, Arroyo Seco specific plan allowance where they disconnect the cost of housing from the cost of parking. If you do not want to include parking, you don't pay for it. And that's been on the books for at least four years. It's called the Cornfields Arroyo Seco Specific Plan. And they provide 
Yeah. You're not yeah. that no, far. Well, no, but, no, but you, you, you can use that as a well, time well, well, yeah. 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 I'm curious, at the, the last community meeting you had, what kind of feedback did you receive? Because I know there was, you had a, um, a box for feedback. Yeah, I think we're still consolidating all of it. We did get a ton, and we had a full box full of, uh, of comments, so we're consolidating those comments from the community meeting, and uh, we had a resident meeting in, um, in advance of that. So we're still pulling those comments together, and then we'll take the comments from today's meeting and, and throw those all together so we can kind of review where, where things are headed in terms of opinions. It, I think it was it was all really. I have to say, mm -hmm. just generally from anecdotally, it was anecdotally, yeah, it was and talking to folks, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, people seem very very pleased with the direction that we're headed. Really positive. Love the fact that we're making a big investment. Um, you know, excited to see that it was scaled. You know, they felt it was scaled uh, appropriately. Appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. to so I would be cautious. I know even though we have people here in support of density, I would be cautious of increasing the density. You're already doubling from what it currently is, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I think increasing the density will, will definitely bring a negative aspect. So. Yeah. The no, we, we felt like a balance was what we were trying to achieve, both for density and parking. Was you know, what's the right mix? Is that you want to have some parking, but you don't want to over, you don't want to build parking instead of housing. Yeah. So yeah, I think our goal was to try and find that sweet spot, and I, I think we, we feel I like we're getting close. Um, you know, and there's always going to be some folks who are like, no more, no, yeah. not too much. You know, and we wanted to be in that kind of that range where. You know, most people are like, yeah, this kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I would ask the committee members, since you are our representatives, to take our input into that. I know you have your personal thoughts, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, no, and, and, and I try and keep it out. I try and keep it out. So. Mm -hmm. uh, can I have a suggestion for architectural styles? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm looking, I'm on, Google, I'm, on, I'm on Google Street View right now. A lot of them have Spanish revival. Mm -hmm. So is that is that like an architectural style that's under consideration? It was on our list, and we, we were just a little concerned that you see so much of it. We didn't mm -hmm. want to kind of do more of okay. the same. But, you know, it's a big enough site, too, that it doesn't necessarily have to be one look either. And so there's the opportunity to have, I think, a couple different uh, styles, and that'll also make it look mm -hmm. more kind of fine grained. So I think, you know, that's, we're not, we're sort of still at that sort of high level in terms of the design. Um, and yeah, we'll come back when we kind of have. You know, the more of the eye candy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's Spanish is out there. I like the Craftsman better. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Craftsman one way it will enhance the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a suggestion. Instead of having flat roof, have a roofs that are slanted. You know, a roof like this because, yeah. like right now, Crash. Craftsman. Okay. Yeah. Because across the hill from us, those apartments, the gangsters go up on the flat roofs and take advantage and do their business. So I would suggest to avoid any mm -hmm. problem. I mean, and the, the, the pictures that you show with the nice decks on the roof, that's okay for the arts district, okay? But in, in the reality, if you're gonna have, in the, like, the projects, it's, it'll be um, not too good. Because we already have a problem around that area. With security. Yeah, not security, but gangs and stuff like that. Yeah, safety. Yeah, safety. Yeah. So, Are we for um, so right now, you done this stuff right now? I'm done. Okay. Um, so right now, um, it's owned by uh, by HUD. The property's owned by HUD. So it's, by the Housing Authority. Housing Authority. By our, by our, by our. So it, it's, you're it's, partially right. This is that there is a HUD declaration of trust on it. Right. On okay. behalf of federal government. And so when it changes to Section Eight, who's going to who's own the property? At, then Hatla will be the ground. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to uh, And then, and then related will be the managing company on there? We're a partnership, so going forward, it's sort of like a public private, but Hatla will always maintain control of the ground. Like it's basically a ground lease. So we're going to essentially lease the buildings from them and then own and operate the buildings, but Hatla remains the owner of the property and they're also, they remain part of the ownership of the buildings as well. So it's. So it's still public. Public it's housing. still public, yeah, yes. it's just it's a private different maintenance. Model. Public right. yeah. It's deeply private. affordable housing. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure I got the switch right. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. want to see the video? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. You don't want to see the video? Okay. I know it's getting late. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. How many dogs? Probably. Okay. Yeah, does anyone want to narrate the video? Where's the cast?
that's the church in the other corner there. So that's looking along uh, Mercury. Along the right hand side is Mercury. And, and, and the Mercury. side slopes up. So yeah. we're kind of going up with the slope of the slope. Yeah. Yeah. All the way up to boundary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's Ernest Dead, you can see on the left. And this is a corner of, Mac this is Mackenzie walking down towards uh, Mer Mercury. So this is sort of what the phase one, so it's got parking and then the phase one building. That's the community building. Mm -hmm. And this is the phase two, which are sort of the townhomes. And then we're going to kind of turn, oh, this is coming down. This is sort of going through the middle of the site, so it gives you the sense of sort of the, this is kind of the top, from mm -hmm. boundary down yep. through the middle. And you see some of the kind of open space, and again, this is, Pretty preliminary, so this is not. This is massing. Yeah, this is massing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not a design yet. This is just gives you a sense of the, the buildings. Sidewalks have to be wider. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is. Not ADA. This is not just, yeah. Uh, yeah. ADA. Yeah. This, this is will all be ADA compliant. It has to be ADA compliant. So there'll be new construction. One hundred. Yeah. Yes. You'll have ramps. One hundred works. Yeah. Elevators too. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Correct. So the, the bigger buildings have elevators. Go to the yeah. city hall, 10th floor, men's bathroom on the north, and on the south side. It's not ADA compliant. Uh, city hall. Oh, they're already in trouble. Want to take a filter time? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of the Center for Independent Living? Mm -hmm. 1972, 73. We can decide on the song too. It's <laughs> 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 nice and peaceful. We're trying to. Right. Yeah. Okay, you go. All right. So, how did I get one unit and how much parking? Just so. Just so. Uh, total parking is 176, so oh, okay. just under one per unit when it's all built out. So. Kind of 191 units. Mm -hmm. That's at least two people for every unit, right? It depends. But yeah, not yeah, not yeah. Not yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean so some are singles, some are doubles, some are triples. But yeah. you're going to be close to five to 560 people, approximately. Mm -hmm. so that's what's going to happen. Living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a five-acre site, so yes, it's it's a big property. So that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But we already have 100 yeah. units, and we are not close to. At some point in time, we have probably 300 to 400 people living in this site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, now that people have become elderly yeah. and the, the adult children have left, it so now it's down people. to 250. But the overhouse. Over house. Over house. That place mm -hmm. is nothing what it used to be like. Right? Yeah. yeah. It is dead. It's a senior home now. It's dead. Yeah, it's, it's a senior home. Yeah, it's dead. Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Yeah. Which is, which is that's why it's got to be updated. So the percentage that you're talking about, because I'm like with you also, if there's a percentage that's capped at it, which you can go up. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you do want to say, okay, you know what, we could, on the retail side, because you already have replaced everybody into their places, mm -hmm. and now this is a kind of a mixed use. If you want to increase it, but don't increase it a lot, so give us a, or a percentage. I'm not going to have your kids. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. Like 5%. Well, yeah, no, like, yeah, like, 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 but I'll say that like, I don't like, 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 like 5%, you yeah. know what I mean? But don't go, don't go crazy with it. Because I don't want, or I don't feel that uh, we want. We don't want to have the feel of downtown density. At Northeast, I live in the North. I've been living in the Northeast all my life ever since I came to Mexico. That's quite a bit of years ago. So there's where we want that feel. Because this is nothing new. I mean, we've been facing this in the '60s, <coughs> early '70s when they and all the projects. Some of the projects have already started. It took 20 years, 30 years. Oh, so man, I remember this. They were talking about this back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're seeing now. So all this is master plan we're talking about, which is, we're not going to fight the master plan. But if we can keep it at a place where we can still have not as high density as the first zone, because we're second zone, if we can have the second zone continue to have that family feel, it'd be fantastic. I all for it. I like the number of mm -hmm. units you chose. It's kind of a million. So I, I think that it's a pretty good number. Okay. Any other comments? I don't want to give much input, but maybe just ask questions. Um, can you please speak to me and those that are here? What 
ideas and visions are you working on? Because we might have touched on it before with that. Are you working on for energy efficiency, reclaimed water, people who are, are washing their clothes that will go to the gray water and then you can use that for sprinklers or um, maybe uh, solar panels or you know, any other things that are coming up for the environment. Just help, just L give me information for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, there was, and then there was one thing that I heard from Tom Williams that I've never heard before, which is this cornfields or Royal Seco plant. And yeah, if you could work on something like that and someone says, hey, I don't need no cars, I don't have a car, and say, so you might live there and your rent's a little bit lower, if I'm understanding it correctly. Maybe you can incorporate something like that, but I've never heard that before, but I like that idea, Tom. It's in Lincoln Heights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think we are going to do lead or, you know, there's different rating systems, so we haven't yet picked which rating system, but I think sustainability is obviously, you know, it's the future, it's, it's this is where we are, and it's the right thing to do. Um, and I think stormwater is a big issue for this site because right now it, everything just runs sort of into a storm um, drain. Low and, impact development. Yeah. So and I, you got Deb's Park sitting next right, mm -hmm. right next door. Mm -hmm. You have recreation center Across over on the other side. You yeah. can collect all of the rainwater mm -hmm. you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's roughly 400 gallons mm -hmm. per thousand square feet of roof. It's a lot of rainwater, so yeah, so that's going to be a big lot part of this. Water. Yeah, it's because right now it just it runs off the site, and that's not the right way to do the rainwater. So you know we're gonna there's a lot of study we still have to do because we are so early on, mm -hmm. and I think it's actually a good segue because the next step um, we got we're working on is we're actually going to start doing the EIR. So um, you know that's. The next sort of notices you'll include see include a shuttle or dash mm -hmm. service connecting to Monterey Road and Huntington Drive, so you can go transit priority. The 252 goes there. Mm -hmm. there right? 252 goes I know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like 252. It's not that frequent. The 252, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it costs yeah. so many cents. You're a senior driver. What we are also looking at, because there is a bus stop right on the corner there, is to make That's that. That's 252. Yeah. And if you're going to do it for 252, mm -hmm. then dash. consider dash. Yeah. I'm like, we can control well, dash there. Dash to where, though? We can, we can definitely ask the city. We can talk about the council. Yeah, we're yeah. 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 they, they somehow yeah. walked out at that yeah. time. Yeah, but we're looking at improving the bus yeah. stop and seeing what we can do to create a shelter there, just make it a little bit nice. You know, there are a lot of things that I think we can do around the site to just make it more pedestrian friendly and, and make it a safer space. We're, we're looking at lighting and all kinds of things that we can do to, to really kind of in, make this an enhanced for, for everybody. And, and it re reminded me, is one of the sources of funds that for affordable housing is uh, the so-called cap and trade. Um, you know, that's not its official name, but we call it cap and trade, and it provides money to subsidize the housing, but it also allows for investments in things like sidewalks and crosswalks and pedestrian safety. So that's one thing we have we would look at is can we make the um, improve the sidewalks, make that crosswalk safer because folks kind of barrel down the hill in the car. So you know we don't have that money yet, but we would that would be one of the sources of funds we'd look at. And then it else it just has the benefit of building the housing, but also providing benefit to the community as well. So are you guys also eligible for LA's HHH money? Is that, is that what it is? The, the homeless know. the homeless <laughs> tax? Or is it JJJ? No, 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 no. 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 JJJ, the JJ. housing money. That's yeah. for, it's for it's homeless. Yeah. Right now it's for homeless. Yeah, yeah. so if it's, if it's housing that's set aside for homeless or chronically homeless, then you're eligible. And I think we were actually just talking about that. I don't think we had planned at this point for a specific, a specific population, as I was mentioning to folks, that we were going to be serving. So right now, um, you know, we haven't done the financing plan for that or thought about a specific population service and we can we want to get feedback again from the community about what you want to see here, what you know, what you think is the, the right mix of uh, housing types that we do. Um, and we'll look at what the market needs. So it's currently not planned for but Resources are important to making site. this happen, so we have to we have to think through kind of all of the available resources and what's appropriate for this location. Right. And I just I, I try not to get my input. I just want to ask another question. Mm -hmm. Before the committee makes a recommendation, if they're ready to turn on, can you just ask those that are here? Right now, there's 100 units. We're not worried about the population. Just ask what do you think would be a, a fair size to build up to. Up to 191, I think you're suggesting 205. Someone might have a different number. Just just to get a rough idea, feel free to ask. And I, I'd like to hear all folks. 
When do I want to start? I already put my input. No, no, how do you just what number? You know what? I, I, I don't want it overpopulated. I, I want the northeast to stay northeast. Um, I like the field. I, 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 I'm close to downtown if I want to get that field. There's a lot of development, tight development over there. I don't want to see it happen. The one thing, though, and at the same time when I was hearing the conversation, um, we were talking about homeless encampments and trying to get rid of that, which I'm fine, but I, it just gives me a different feel to what this project would be if you would incorporate that. That kind of changes it up a little bit because you're, you're developing it and changing it completely from the, what it's been. And here it is again. I'm not against the homeless, but you know, who would be able to qualify or are you going to get subsidized for that? So it's just a, that kind of puts a little red flag for me on that end, as far as for that. Thanks. Mary? No, no. Okay. Um, you guys don't listen to me, so I don't have to say nothing. What? <laughs> what it is, 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 is as good as I, I like it to be, that's density-wise. How about the lady? Yeah, I, I wouldn't go higher in density. Um, you're already doubling. You have that empty lot near by, which we have no idea what that's gonna come, you know, become years later. So I will not want to increase it. To be cautious, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, roughly at least 300, maybe 350 or more units. Commensurate with the fact that you're within three miles, four miles of downtown LA. <laughs> Would you mind respecting Excuse me, gentlemen, and I'm not that a child. you have major transportation. I always tell people, plus 78, 79. If you go to Maycrest, you can get a seat anytime. By the time you get to Broadway, standing room only. We need more buses, one way, but this also provides direct access to Debs Park, open space. It provides access to a recreation center. It provides access to bus 78, 79, 79A, 378, 252. And so it's. And the 252 is the access to 45. Hmm? The 45, too. 252 is the access to 45. And, yeah. 45 right there on Broadway. If you walk a little bit, it's yeah. 50 feet. But it's a matter that there's an opportunity. You have the space. It's a good location. I'd love to have a fifth floor apartment there overlooking Debs Park. Observation deck. And being so close, and being relatively flat land going down to Huntington Drive in Monterey. So I'd say, eh, go for the maximum allowed under 743 the city ordinance for trans transit priority areas. If you do not, then you better have a good reason why not. You don't want So you've been quiet over there, do you want to contribute? I agree with the amount of units. Okay. Uh, hey, Anthony, you, right? no, you no, forgot Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Anthony, what do you want? Anthony. Yes, uh, realistically, if it was up to me, I don't, it's right currently 100. I don't mind the increase. My number, if I gave one, would be right around 160. Okay. okay, no action? No action. No action, okay. So. so, yeah, I mean, just for our next step, so you know, um, you know, we're gonna start to take all these comments back in, um, digest them, try to sort of work that into some more, um, you know, drawings and narrative, uh, and then go back out to the community again. So we expect to, to be back out talking to our residents, talking to our neighbors, um, and hopefully we, uh, we'd like to come back in front of um, the subcommittee here, and, and then hopefully in front of uh, the entire neighborhood council to, to present. So uh, yeah, this is this kind is of the iterative process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're at, this is the beginning. Um, we are going to start uh, doing the EIR, so you'll see, you know, as the EIR goes through its steps, you'll get notices and, okay. and you get, ask you what yeah, you yeah, so you get, you get the opportunity to provide comments and then it'll, it'll also include all the studies and reports, so that, you know, the EIR takes a good chunk of time, um, but, and then while the EIR is going through, we'll be developing the drawings and, and can come back when we have more detail. Thank you very much. I do want to say thank you, and I know you're planning on coming back, but can you just let those committee members and those of us that are here know 
how many meetings have you had with the residents mm -hmm. and how many with the community? And since this is your first one following the neighborhood council structure, just sort of give us a guideline. What have you done up mm -hmm. till now? Meetings-wise, just meetings. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on if you count all the meetings we had during the rehab process right. and the, the proposed rehab right. process. Right. I would say with the, with the new concept, we started it back in August, I think, right. with, the, right. with the residents. May or August with the residents. So we've had, a, we've had about three, three, meetings. three meetings with our on-site residents. Okay. And then we had one big community meeting off-site okay. um, at the rec center. And then we're here. So that's the beginning of this process. Prior Perfect. to that, what we were doing our... Do you want to talk a little bit just about some of the outreach you've been doing uh, to kind of get the word out to? Because it's we're, we're trying to kind of make sure everyone in the neighborhood knows about it. Too. Right, right. And so um, one of the... Uh, obviously... We've met with some of the committee folks here, um, but we we made sure that residents from Rosco Courts knew about uh, the meetings that were coming up, and if they couldn't make it to the meeting because they were handicapped you know, accessible, or they just didn't couldn't leave their unit, uh, we made sure we uh, got information to them, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Uh, we've been translating documents. We've we've uh, so a lot of the focus has been the inside of the, of the Rosco Courts neighborhood, but we've also made sure that. The, the church has information, the school, uh, uh, Glen Alta has, inf has information, um, you know, flyers or meetings information that we're putting out. Um, the East Side Cafe, uh, um, you know, make sure that they get information. And, and folks that have come to the meetings that have shared their, their email address or, or, or mail address, we make sure that we, we get to them too. Get your videos and put them online. They've been up, so we did send out the flyer to different organizations so of the meeting or some of the well. meetings so that you can promote more public input. It'll be it'll be on YouTube by uh, this weekend, just so you know. On yeah. El Cerrito on, on the yeah. head nine screen. Yeah. I think we, yeah, we talked about kind of what else we could do from a social media standpoint, and I think yeah. we're, we were debating whether we can get a Facebook page or you something. Can. That, that was my question. Can we get a Facebook page? We like don't, we don't yet, yet, but I think, I you're, think that you're on next door I think it's this important. last week. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's important to look at another medium to get information out, because we know we have a lot of working families, a lot of folks who can't make it up to meetings, so we have to be more sort of generous and thoughtful in how we can get people to see what's going on. But I do think that if if you provide permission right now, things, things will change, you know? So I think you should just be cautious about what you put out because then, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right. people will, yeah. I've seen this still still working face, so, yeah. right. you know. Yeah. Social media can go sideways really quick if someone gets on and all of a sudden you now turns into debate and some project that we can present you about. That's why you, have, a, that's why you have an administrator. You have a debate. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, again, uh, you know, we'll make sure that each and every one of you here are, are part of the, uh, notification and just by, by way of background I actually lived through the Pico Liso redevelopment project as a housing authority resident so um, you know I got I got to live and see what what the housing authority didn't do right the last time and, and got to see what this team is doing right and, and that is you know 20 years in the future now we have a team that's put together that understands not just the housing projects but what's around you you know, transportation, you know, making sure that other organizations know, that other residents know. Um, and so there were a lot of learning, a lot of learning steps because, you know, in the 90s, it really was an issue. You remember Roseville Court oh, in yeah. the 90s, Ramona oh, yeah. Gardens in the 90s, you couldn't go into those neighborhoods. Well, go back go to the Maravilla projects, what they Maravilla. did, yeah, they moved them out, displacement, yeah. they didn't have yeah. to get, but I mean, but it's so lot, going on. Yeah, right and a lot of these folks remember that time, so the outreach to them has been like, yeah, you know, just hurry up and do it already, we want this, and so it's been energetic, people are excited, they're anxious, and so, you know, we want to make sure that they know they're part of the, of the process. One what, what question, do you have, um, Info that people wrote down, like I did my info, and so our, this meeting was wasn't advertised through you guys, all right? Wasn't sent out like as a as a I think that's just something think you so. should do. Though, yeah, no, you're right. I don't active. think. Yeah. Put yeah. a calendar on your Facebook page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Google Doc, or Google. Everybody does yeah. Facebook. Yeah. 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 Just uh, just just so that yeah. people are not don't people come know back what's and going say, on. And, yeah, no, yeah, I was notified. Yeah. So, yeah just, I only got it on my Gmail because of. The other meeting, right. and yours was hooked on to that. Mm -hmm. That's how we found out this is our first meeting mm -hmm. coming to this. Yep. But I do appreciate that you guys all came out again and waited uh, for the first uh, presentation. Project, yeah. Project. So I appreciate your time. I know it's uh, Wednesday. 